There you go. There you go, AWAG. Now you can say hello. Hi. Hi. Hey, guys. Welcome back to Caliber Corner. Sorry that we're late. I needed not one, but two extra cups of coffee today. And, uh, man, we got a lot of people already very active over in the chat, over on the YouTube side. We'll check the gun channel side here in just a minute. Uh, but anyway, guys, we got all kinds of fun stuff we're going to talk about today. We'll talk about some EDC essentials. We will also talk about our recommendations uh, for a $500 rifle or defensive rifle pistol combo and the Glock G43 versus a 9mm 1911. And we also have a reloading question from a viewer. So we'll see if you guys can help this viewer with the problem that they're having with their reloading. So uh, let's go and let everybody introduce themselves. Um, we'll go ahead and start off with my right. So Tony, what's going on, Tony? Uh, not a lot. I'm sitting here waiting wait for the kids to wake up. Ah, uh, you guys getting any snow right now? We're getting dumped on. No, nothing yet. Oh, you're lucky. I'll, I'll send some your way, okay? Thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> you're welcome, man. You're welcome. Yeah. Snowblower review will be coming on Monday. So, all right, cool. Gun Snob is with us. We got a couple new people on here. I'm just I'm trying to invite as many people as I can. Want to send the invites out? So, uh, Gun Snob, what's going on, man? What you want to give us a little plug for the channel and let us know about let us know a little bit about you? Um. Yeah, I'm here. Uh, yeah. Here in a little while before you go off, I'll give a plug for my giveaway I got going on. So, anyways, but that's all. It's a nice, beautiful, cold morning in sunny Oklahoma. So, when you say cold, how cold is cold? Because we're sitting at 19 right now and we're supposed to be at 8 below by tomorrow morning. Well, it's, guess. it's 21 here actually right now, oh, but it's supposed okay. to be negative 10 wind chill by tomorrow oh, afternoon. Oh, you guys better bundle up. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's 33 here now. Oh, oh, all right. Well, at some point, the sun will come out. It will warm up. So uh, then we'll be complaining because it's too hot. So anyway, hey, thanks for joining, though. I mean, I appreciate you jumping on here. Yeah, and, thanks, uh, for, thanks for having along. me. And, yeah, like I said, all this try. I'm trying to invite as many people as I can. So um, Squib, what's going on, Squib? How you doing today, man? Are you home? Yeah, you know, you really should eat at your reload bench, but I am. I'm thinking now that what I need is a napkin dispenser. Do I have room for one, though? Napkin dispenser for what? Well, I'm trying to eat like a slug. Oh. Don't you have a t-shirt on? Dude. I'm a napkin. Just keep, a, just keep a roll of paper towels behind you like I do, man. You got any any mess we can clean up, you know? That's all you got to do, buddy. The quicker picker upper. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Notice my proper trigger discipline with my mug. We'll talk about the mug here in a minute. Uh, so, Squib, what can we expect to find on your channel? You got more content coming out there now, don't you? Yeah, I've got um, I've got uh, some videos that I'm still working on. I um, I did one on um, uh, the Lee uh, Quick Trim system. I wow. actually shot the video three times because I stuck at making videos. <laughs> uh, so I'll, I'll kick that one free next week and i've got some more speaking squibbish videos and if there's a passing train or something i'll record it so sure 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 <clears throat> that's cool man yeah it is a lot of work making those videos but i mean it is funny you're putting them on. and you are one heck of a coffee reviewer i'll tell you what you've got a palette for coffee that is unmatched yeah. in the industry, that is unmatched in the industry <laughs> So, so even though it does seem like I'm making a jab at you, and I even kind of reference that in right. one of the versions, it's, it's right. really a jab at the people that are calling you a shill. But um, yeah, I, I, I had, uh, I, you know, what's what's awful is, I'm, I'm using Windows Movie Maker, which takes a long time to save changes and do all this, and I was doing my, my edit, uh, and while I'm, while I'm waiting and waiting and waiting for to save changes, I'll go and watch short YouTube videos to get caught up. And you had one of your coffee reviews up there, and I hadn't seen it yet, so I'm watching it, and I'm and some of the same things are happening in the coffee. So you can see me like face palm, oh, right? That's all right. And, that's and then and then you talked about the distilled water, and then I double face palmed, and uh, Dude, I should I have done a video yeah, on me watching distilled your water. Video. You don't use distilled water; you got to use purified water. You don't ever want to use distilled water for coffee. Oh well, <laughs> I, I always use distilled water. So. No, I do, I do, I do purified. You got to have some of the minerals in there for for, for, for taste and for you know. Um, actually, I think distilled water has the dehydrating effect, doesn't it? I don't know. But anyway, uh, no, dude, it's fine. It's all good. I don't. I was laughing at it the whole time. So coffee. I mean, I'm gonna admit it. I am a coffee nerd. I've read. I've got a 
everything you want to know about coffee and encyclopedia i've run it up at school basically twice now i've run through it and read through it and i just it's just a hobby you know this is something i enjoy doing and trying different coffees my taste buds have changed so much since i was younger i didn't even start drinking coffee till about 10 years ago but anyway enough of my problems all right so squib thanks for joining us make sure you guys check out Squib's channel at squib load capital s capital l space between the two it shows up on about the second page on a youtube search if you're looking for the channel and uh third, third that's page. i'm third down page. on the totem pole because uh, somebody was asking how to find your channel. I think it was like maybe Storm and Norman wanted to know how to find your channel. I tried finding his email or his message, and I couldn't find it to reply back to him. So it's just squib, squib space load, and it's like second or third. You'll find it easy. Cool, man. All right, Sandhills, what's going down, bro? Good morning. I am just heading into work. All right. And uh, I will hang out as long as I can. Thanks for letting me come hang out. Hey, why don't you tell us a little bit about Two Way Tuesday? Because it's a really good podcast. If people want to know about it, they're kind of curious, or if they just don't know. Well, I don't know. I don't know how good it is. It, uh, Dude, it's a good show, man. It generally turns into something pretty fun, but that's mostly due to the uh, the cast of characters that we have on the panel every week. So it's nothing nothing that I'm doing myself there. But uh, yeah, every Tuesday night, nine o'clock Central Time, right after uh, Night Strike is done. Then, uh, <clears throat> then we do Two Way Tuesday, and and uh, we talk about a wide variety of topics. It's not always gun related, but uh, it's it's not even always Second Amendment related. Sometimes we get into some other stuff too. But it's it's amazing how everything kind of ties back anyway to the Second Amendment. So uh, uh, yeah, give it a look on our channel Tuesday nights nine Central, and uh, there's some other stuff going on on the channel too. Um, I encourage everybody to go check out the Ring the Bell video. Uh, yeah. That one was cool, and it's one of the uh, – that's probably the the video that I've wanted to make the most. I don't blame you guys. Definitely go check that out if you do. If you want, or if we'll try to get that – we'll get that posted over on the chat on the YouTube and the Gun Channel side, and people can go watch it later on today. It's a, it's a really good video. Good, good experience for a person, man, for people, for a family. So there you go. All right, man. Well, we'll keep checking your channel and uh, you keep doing those podcasts. And uh, yeah, I appreciate you being here, man. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Cool, cool. All right. Joining us for the first time, Patriot in the Dark. What's going on, man? How you doing? Uh, good morning. Thank you for the invite. And All right. it's, it's really bright outside. Mm -hmm. oh. This time of the morning <laughs> is pretty crazy. So yeah, you got your coffee, Patriot, or not? I, I definitely do. I'm yeah. about uh, half pot in. So there you go. There you I go. actually I have some stuff I'm supposed to do today because it is every second matters. Oh yes, but oh, yes. Uh, I'm I just happen to be the the blind guy over there on Gun Channels. Uh, you can find me everywhere, I guess. Patriot in the dark. There you go. But I do appreciate you letting me in the the riffraff. Your level's hey. going down a notch, but do I? <laughs> I will I will I will try to stand up to the you know caliber that you uh, have. So Please, no, I just we just around talk guns, man. We talk about guns and ammo and gear and all kinds of other fun stuff. It's pretty easy, so that's all right, man. Well, guys, make sure you check out Patriot's channel. He's got some awesome uh, firearms videos, really cool disassembly videos, lots of good stuff, man. Do check out the channel. Make sure you subscribe. Thank you very much. All right, and uh, the Kingpin's joining us, David. What's going on, man? How you doing? Uh, not too bad. Thanks for having me. I'm working, so I'll be okay. in and out. No, don't worry about it. That's fine, dude. No problem. You chime in anytime you want, anytime you can, okay? Cool, guys. Make sure you check out uh, Kingpin's channel. And uh, real quick, uh, Kingpin, you've got your drawing coming up. Was that is that going to happen tonight? Yeah, I, I made okay. a couple mistakes on the sports shooters ammunition giveaway. And uh, Rich Wright won the grand prize, but he had made it pretty clear that he was just, you know, commenting on the video. He didn't want to enter the contest. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and send him a gift card because I messed that up and uh, tonight on Orange You Glad It's Not the Closer I'm going to do a live drawing for the 500 round grand prize winner okay okay cool cool that'd be alright make sure you guys do check that out that's over on uh, or Obnoxious One's channel and you guys that are in the Gun Channel's family know, know where to find him otherwise we'll, we can get his link out there on the chats too so you can come check it out so good stuff alright and then also joining us we got the, uh, the Tactical Pickle Calaveras Calaveras what's going on man no, not much. Just a balmy 49 degrees and raining out here in California today. I'd trade that. I'd trade for that so much. <laughs> oh, All right, sure. so, yeah. so is balmy. the rain putting out the fires or is it making mudslides? Uh, yes. well, the fires have been out for a few months, but that's where the uh, 
the eight and a half, nine inches of rain that we received in February is causing some pretty good mudslides up in the mountains. Uh, yeah, like I said, that's like what we get in a year out here where I live. That's crazy, man. Well, that's really, yeah, almost nine inches of rain in the valley and in the foothills. And what I think was 32 feet of snow at Squaw Valley up by Tahoe. So just a quick question. And again, we want to get to AWAG. Do you have like, because you've got this constant, I don't say constant, but this, this, this threat at any time you could have to deal with earthquakes or mudslides or flooding or fires. Do you have pretty much a 24 seven bug out load out ready to go? If you got to jump in the Jeep and go. I've been trying to put one together, but I don't have one currently. Okay. Okay. No, I just said, I'm like, man, cause if you guys got to leave, you know, cause I see the forest fire stuff and some of these people think they can stick it out or they don't realize how quick those things can travel and boom, the fires in their backyard, you know? Yeah. Speaking oh. of how fast it can move, that's for yeah. here. The, this last summer, the deadliest wildfire in California history was the campfire. Uh, yeah. It was advancing somewhere on the order of, you know, Six to seven football fields a minute. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> Jeez. That's freaking crazy, dude. I mean, that's that's just – that's nuts. I mean, I, I can't imagine the wow. – Yeah, that's hard to outrun in a car. Yeah. A good yeah. yeah, that's – you'd have to be hauling it. Yeah, especially if you don't have a straight, flat area to drive on if you're going through twisty mountain roads and stuff. I can see why people don't make it out. All right, man. Well, hey, you just be safe and uh, stay dry. That's all we can say. So. Oh, yeah. We'll do it. All right. Okay, AWAG, what's going on, man? How you doing, bro? Um, nothing, nothing much. Um, all right. You know. Okay, all righty then. AWAG is a busy man, so uh, let's go and just see who's joining us real quick over on the uh, the Gun Channel side. What we got over there? Oh no, got an error loading. I'll try to get that to load back up. We'll come back to that in a sec. Okay, the uh, YouTube. Currently, right about that. me, Sean Pondry, and Ohio Forty Five ACP, but I'm the only one that's actually got a green leaf. Okay, yeah, because I'm just getting the little – the connection was reset icon over there. I'm on back. The side, so. Oh, AWAG, you're back. Hey, do you want to talk about the channel real quick before we let everybody know who's joining us today? Yep. Uh, I got tons, tons, and tons of projects I'm working on. Uh, I got a little bit of list if anybody wants to know. I got a uh, Yugoslavian M76 um, sniper rifle. That's the title of it. It's basically a designated marksman's rifle. I got a Romanian PSL that I'm working on. I got a Romanian AKM that I'm working on. I got a Bulgarian AK-74 that I'm trying to re uh, redo the front rivets on. And I also have a Winchester 1911 semi-automatic shotgun that I'm trying to restore. Nice, nice. Man, this is good. You're, you're honing your, your gun crafting skills before you start going uh, live making Night Wagon Rifle Works AK-47s, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Tony, man. Uh, and and McMaster, McMaster Car is now the new Amazon for me. Ah, um, so they're they're in New Jersey, so it's really awesome that I can buy like raw materials and have them at my door the next day. That's cool. That is cool. Sweet man. Well, keep us updated, and uh, if we check out your channel, will we see some of those projects over on your channel? I know you got to be kind of limited with what you post for you know for assembly videos or manufacture videos, but yeah, you're okay. Um, you got some stuff over there right now. Some content. Yeah, I, I got some uh, material on my computer right now that I'm trying to work on. Uh, I'm actually gonna. Um, hop out of here in like 20 minutes because i got a lot of stuff to do because no problem man yeah family stuff <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah no that's so right. thank you for having me on um sure. hopefully i can input my uh knowledge into the discussion so yeah well we got some pretty decent topics for today it's gonna be some interesting ones guys by the way if you're new to caliber corner anybody that's watching these are all viewer suggestion topics at some point We'll run out of them because I've been just going off of my giveaway suggestions and I still have some topics left over, but we just like to throw the answers to the questions out there that people have. And so uh, joining us on the YouTube side, we got Calaveras32 Special. He's there and here. Fine Ape1393, Gun Snob is there and here. Cowboy Swami, Black Cat Outdoors, Tony Nagy, Mad Sexy Man of the Night. Rob D. New York is with us also. Tacos and French fries as usual, of course, while Bill, Frank the Tank Helm, and Frank, I got that AR that you sent me sitting over here on the table. Wife let me have it for a couple hours before it goes back up into the crafting room on her desk. Uh, Bass Boy 99091 is with us. Midnight Range is in the house. Uh, Stephen Dawkins is out there. Uh, let's see. Gun Snob there and here. Marty Huggins is with us. Tahuya P29 is in the house. Cadillac Jack. Adam Brock. 
Uh, Liberty's Warriors with us. Good morning, sir. He says, I'm at the range right now, and it's snowing like crazy on me, LMAO. Dude, I'll tell you what. I might just have to go out today. Even if it's snowing, it's supposed to be in the 20s. I can handle that. Tennessee Patriots in the house. The Mech is with us. Ed is with us. He's saying, what's up? How you doing, buddy? Jason Stewart's out there. Uh, let's see, hopefully, SS Pond's joining us. Good morning, Stan. Blue Steel 44, Sui 778. Guys, make sure you check out Sui 778's channel. He's got some really cool uh, range tests. He's got one on the Sky CPX3, which I think it's one of the only actual non-sponsored range tests on all of YouTube, as well as the uh, Taurus TH40, if I'm not mistaken, Sui. You can correct me on that. And uh, he's also got TH9 videos on there. He does a comparison between the two. And Rich White's in the house, Stealth Hunter 1000. Omi Legali. Man, I could just go on forever. And I think that's it. Ozzy Orsborn. Sam, Sam, Sam of Anarchy is with us, too. So, man, I'm exhausted. Okay, so let's just go right into the first topic. So, you guys can just throw it out there. We don't necessarily have to do round table or go down the line or anything. Essential EDC items. What's something that you guys have on you all the time? As much as you can or are legally allowed to carry. It's like even at my own job, I can't have a knife or a gun on me at work. So, what do you guys have? What are some good EDC items that you have with you? I would suggest everybody get a knife, even if it is like a $10 Kershaw or whatever, whatever have you. Um, definitely something that has a folded blade. Um, you know, something that'll fit in your pocket that's kind of unconspicuous looking. Uh, now, I went a little overboard and my carry uh, knife is a uh, Spyderco Paramilitary 2. Stay away from Benchmade because issues with that, you can look up that if you're... Uh, if you don't know sure about is. it. Yeah. So, okay, um, uh, AY, what about a light or a pistol? I mean, if you could conceal carry, what would your EDC pistol be? Um, personally, I, uh, I've i carried a few times. Um, okay. Uh, when I was in Indiana. Yeah, um, yeah, you mentioned but, that before. Yeah. Uh, but like with me, I'm super scrawny, so I can actually get away with hiding a full-size handgun. Um, and normally I wear a light jacket everywhere, no matter what the temperature is. <laughs> Okay. So uh, I could I could probably get away with most full size handguns. Um, do you have Do you have a flashlight preference at all? Like a certain brand that you go to or anything? I'm like a Streamlight fanboy. Okay. Um, my personal favorite for their flashlights is the. Uh, it's either the HLX, uh, the Protac. They make they make one as one for uh, weapons mount, mm -hmm. weapon, weapons mounted, and then they also have another one that just has a clip that. It uh, keeps it on you. It's a very small flashlight, but it puts out like a thousand lumens. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, it oh runs god. on. Um, I think it runs on either one or two um, CR one two three A's. Okay. Um, and other than that, Streamlight makes very good um, offerings for for flashlights. I definitely suggest checking them out because their warranty is incredible. Mm -hmm. And even their build quality is incredible. You know, um, I have their HLX ProTac. Um, I have both the clip version and the weapons mounted version. Um, and the weapons mounted one I have, it sits right next to the muzzle brake on my AR. And it just, I've already had a thousand rounds through it and it still works like the day it was new out of the box. So oh, wow. they're definitely some rugged flashlights. Yeah, I got a TLR1 HL and I love that thing, dude. That thing's... <laughs> It's a go to. I mean, that's pretty much it. So yeah, I uh, have a TLR three on my Sig uh, P two two six, and that thing is just super rigid too. Okay, okay. Do you have any? Can you think of any like non traditional EDC items or anything else that you have on you? A pencil <laughs> or a pen. And, you know, and that's just it. Is the, the question that we had is, you know, can you can you go beyond just gun knife and and, and flashlight? But I was just going to check in with everybody and see what works for you. Yeah, a nice pen or a pencil. I know some people like to have you know pens that can write in ink. That doesn't smudge yeah. out when it's wet. I like to have an all weather pencil or all weather pen with them and stuff. Yeah, I yeah. mean, it, most most pens are sort of oil based uh, nowadays, so they'll write anywhere. Yeah. Um, yeah, I definitely keep what is it, the Pilot G twos. Yes, I'm being yeah. specific about pens. No, they're um, they're good. I mean, I'm they're a great yeah. pen. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, if you even if you don't have something to write on, um, you know, you can use your hand like or, like in high school, you write oh, down yeah. somebody's phone number. Well, I never got um, to do that, but I, I, I'm, I've, I've heard it's, you know. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's a thing to do. I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Travis was busy playing that, D and D, so he didn't have to worry about girls. It was not a hit with the ladies, believe it or not. It was not a hit with the ladies. So yeah. All right. Okay, so let's, uh, let's carry on. Anybody else want to want to chime in? What are some of your other EDCs? What do you guys? What do you go? I don't care. Anybody join in? 
Something uh, like that. Cold Steel Code 4 uh, Tonto for a blade. I can't carry it into the office, so I have to leave it in my vehicle. Yeah. But that's right. I always have that. Uh, I always have a uh, one of the little like inch and a quarter uh, Victorinox with Army knives. Uh, and again, that's leaving the vehicle and a quality uh, multi tool. I prefer a Leatherman. Uh, you know, uh, someone out in the chat mentioned Leatherman Wave, which I had when yeah. I rode before I broke it and then had to go buy one of the uh, heavy duty Leathermans. It's the Surge, I think it is. A little heavier, but a little better made. Did you think uh, about sending the Leatherman in for repair? Because I've, I've broken a bit off, of, like an end off of one of mine before, and I sent the knife and they sent me a brand new knife. Or I just product. haven't got around to doing that. Oh, yet. okay. Because they they've got a their warranty. They're no questions asked. You just drop in the mail with the return address, and they I didn't even contact them or anything. I just put it in the mail, and they sent me back a brand new knife in the package. Or new, I need to. I yeah. just haven't. Okay, cool. Uh, cool. I didn't want to be without such. After I broke it, I went and bought another one. I just haven't got the one broken one in yet. Uh, but yeah, that's right. The flashlights are a good idea. Writing utensils, you know, and a writing instrument is a good idea. That's where. Pen or pencil, I guess, you know, a pen gives you the option of being able to write on the hand if you need to. Mm -hmm. Or forearm actually is less likely to get washed off than the hand. Yeah. But, uh, versus a pencil is not going to have that. If you ever really, really, really in the need for, you know, uh, writing and you have a knife, stick the end of the finger and you can write it in blood. Uh, That's true. That's always an option. I mean, you've got pretty much unlimited ink to a point, and then eventually you'll pass out. But yeah. That's uh, where the joke, though, comes from, you know, working in construction with my family. That's where the joke was always uh, keep a pencil on you, or we'll stab you in the end of the finger. You can write measurements in blood. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, question now in your work environment, could you have one of the TSA approved Leatherman pocket tools? The ones that don't have any kind of an edge on them whatsoever. They make ones you can get that have just like the nail file, pliers, uh, wire cutters, scissors. I've never seen those, and I've never asked. Oh, I know uh, you make a TSA friendly model that you can. I doesn't mean it still couldn't get taken by TSA, but it's supposedly approved for travel. And okay. they're yeah, yeah. Look into that because I know that. Yeah, I that's know. right. I used to carry my little Swiss Army knife at work, and you know, because that's for especially as an intern, they would have me do random stuff like, well, we got a shipment in, you know, uh, of uh, the printer cartridges and all this kind of stuff. Go restock the storeroom. Okay, so I'd be cutting boxes yeah, open, open and, stuff. and then yeah. someone saw I had it one day and freaked out that I had a knife on me. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot yeah. you're in California. Did they give you a box cutter? Uh, they have a box cutter, but instead of it being a standard uh, like extendable open. blade one, yeah. it's one of the ones that you squeeze it, the blade can come out about an eighth of an inch, and then it, as soon as you let go of it, it retracts. Yeah, those safety cutters, yeah. Yeah, yeah and they're complete garbage. Oh, all right. All right. Well, there you go. Got a few more ideas. Okay, guys, anybody else want to chime in? I've, I've got something. Hmm? Everybody carries a phone and all that stuff, but in your wallet, you should have a hard copy of your phone numbers. Yes. You know, it's, you know, the, the lawyer thing and, the, you know, your attorney or something is kind of cool, but just a hard, hard copy of, of your phone numbers because well, you need it if you lose power or lose your phone or it gets taken or whatever. So. Well, who knows if you have some kind of a traumatic situation, you might not be in a, in a mindset where you can think straight, you know, say you get in a car accident or something happens, you know, you got them right there. You can pull it out and dial it if you need to, you know, well, that's a good point. When I was a kid, I remembered everybody's phone number oh, because we yeah, didn't have yeah. a phone, but now I really don't know very many people's phone number. I still, exactly. I still remember my own home phone number. I still remember. I got my dad's number memorized, my best friend's number. I still remember those, you know, Oh my God! Talking about car accident, I can from firsthand experience. I can tell you when you flip a car end over end at fifty five miles an hour, you come out of it pretty dazed. I'm sure you would. <laughs> and it's also uh, something you can hand to somebody. Yes. And say, here's my list. Can you, you know? Or if somebody, you know, if you are in a tragic wreck and taken to the hospital and unconscious, they can't get into your phone, but they can get into your wallet and find information. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> A couple other things I like to carry in my wallet is uh, I like somewhere in a different compartment than the normal money compartment. I just like to to fold up a twenty dollar bill and just keep an emergency twenty bucks. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, and that's gonna... that's what I do is yeah. uh, in between my phone and my phone case, I keep either a twenty dollar bill or a fifty dollar bill, depending on uh, where I'm going or what I'm doing. Uh, yeah, I mean, just as you might need it just to put enough, 
might need to just put enough gas in the car to get you home or something. You never know for sure. But it's good to have it. another thing I carry. Um, I mean, I've got my house key on my key ring, but I carry a spare house key in my wallet too. Because if I ever walk out without my keys and I pull the door shut behind me and lock it, uh, I've, I've actually locked myself out before. And we had to call somebody from a different town to come bring their copy of our house key to get oh. us back in. So I'm not going to let that happen again. Yeah. Uh, and then I might be old school, but one more thing that I try to always have at least one of on me is a hanky. Oh, man, I'm always, we always cut our hands or fingers. You're always working on something, even little jobs or getting under the hood of your vehicle. You scrape a knuckle or you're working on a gun. And you pinch something. I mean, it's been so many times that, that I've done that myself. I just, I keep a little baggie with band-aids in my, my little side bag that I use for school all the time because I'm always doing something. It seems like got advantage right of there. working on an old car <laughs> yeah. is everything's usually so covered with grease and grime that you oh, yeah. slice yourself open. The grime immediately, you know, uh, Gets steals it. in there and steals the <laughs> This is true. This is true. That's how it is for my Jeep. I can tell you that. Yeah, infections. Mm -hmm. hey, Tom, there you go. Good, but thanks for letting me come in today for a while. Uh, no problem, man. No problem. Later hey, Squib, what? No problem, man. Thanks for being here. Hey, uh, Squibby, Squibby, what's uh, what's your EDC, man? Do you have any any pocket stuff you carry? Any any pocket tools or any flashlights? What do you recommend? Well, you know, I was listening to things everybody else was saying. At first, huh? I need to address something AWAG said. I'm reattaching a uh, a single stage press to my uh, bench with fasteners from McMaster Car. AWAG, you are absolutely right. If you need something, especially fasteners, they've got any shape, size, color, material, you name it. Um, they're a really good source for, for parts pieces. They're a little bit little bit pricey compared to some of their competitors, but they have everything and it's in stock. So I'm I'm glad you brought up McMaster Car during the show. For anybody who has, if you're if you're in industrial, if you're in skilled trades and stuff like that, you'll know who they are. They're like Granger, but better. Um, but if you're if you're not familiar uh, with them, I mean, you don't have to be a business to buy something online from them. So, okay, now that that's tightened down, um, I heard uh, also Awag mentioned a Streamlight. I don't have a Streamlight flashlight, but I would like to get one. As far as I know, they're American made. They are a little pricey, but. Um, uh, I'm, I'm imagining they're they're worth the cost. They're well the worth it. I, they are worth it. Okay. Well, the reason I don't have an expensive American-made uh, EDC flashlight is because if I lose it, I'm out. You know, some like a hundred bucks or something. And I actually had a situation where um, I, I wasn't I wasn't carrying an EDC flashlight for the longest time. I was just using a flashlight on my phone. And my dad got me one for um, Christmas one year, and I'm like, what am I going to do with this? And everybody on Gun Channel say, you need to carry a flash. You need it. It's like, I got a light on my phone. I don't know. Well, at my job, I'm crawling inside of machines, and the factory's not very well lit. And my phone, even though it's flat, it's kind of awkward to get in some of those spaces. I actually need something that's kind of round, mm -hmm. and um, it's just not bright enough. So I decided I'll bring in this thing I got the, as a gift, and it worked great. And... Um, I said, okay, now I have a use for this. Now I understand why everybody was pushing me to carry an EDC flashlight. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I had a situation where I was doing my uh, weekly walk around the building, and for some reason or another, I dropped it or something, and it fell in a snowbank, and I didn't find it for a week. Until the snow melted, I didn't find it. I found it by mistake outside, and uh, I, I mean, I went looking for it everywhere. It's like, I hope I didn't leave this in a machine. Uh, it still worked after setting out in the snow for a week. So, um, in that, in that sense, um, for me buying a cheap, a $10 flashlight is, is the way I'm going to go. Oh, yeah. But, um, if I wasn't prone to lose the thing, I'd probably rather have the streamlight. You can get the, uh, ultra fire flashlights off like uh, wish.com and stuff. You can buy bulk packs of them and they're three or $4 a piece. And those just run on a double a battery, if I'm not mistaken. Those are nice little lights. I mean, I, I, I'm the same kind of situation. I lose lose lights frequently and knives and pocket tools. So, all right, Gunstop, what do you got, man? I'm gonna have oh, to this is one of those ultra fires like you're yeah. talking about, like three or four bucks on eBay. They're not bad. And you can do flood or spot. I mean, they've got them just thrown yeah. around everywhere because they're so cheap. Me and too. I've got them like every room in the house. Every room, there's one just sitting all over the place. So, <laughs> well, you guys know how I'm always, always about buy American, buy American, but um, there's yeah. certain things if it's disposable or semi disposable, I guess I really don't care where it's made. So, I would much rather have a streamlight, but uh, I just, uh, 
if, if I lost it, I'd be pretty ticked. And uh, what's that? Oh, this is the best stream light I think to go with. Are they really American little... made though? I'm pretty sure my. I don't think they're. I think I some know. of them are, but I don't think. Maybe. I know this one's okay. not. All right. Yeah, if I'm gonna buy a stream light, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get one of the American made ones, but. Uh, yeah, I just maybe I'll I'll keep keep that in my range bag or something and and just keep carrying the ten dollar one to work. So because I'm on my third one in a year. So. <laughs> yeah, um, I was gonna say that's uh, depending on your situation. Uh, going, you know, Walmart, Home Depot, wherever you can buy the bulk packs of the uh, LED flashlights that run on one or two double A's. And yeah. you can scatter them throughout the house, and you can, you know, uh, you could go through one a week, and you wouldn't even really cry over it. I mean, right. Dollar Tree sells them if you were totally on a budget, just cash strap, but you want some source of light, you know. It's uh, amazing how good cheap flashlights are yeah. compared to 10 years ago. LEDs these days are just, you know. Um, Squib, quick recommendation. I don't want to jump the jump the shark or whatever here, but I got uh, Maglite. These are made in the USA. This is the little mini Maglite. These guys are 15 bucks. Yeah, but is it LED? Yeah, it is. It's, it's oh, it bright. is. Oh, okay. Uh, I think I got a video on this on my channel. If you check it out, it lights things up really well. This is I just keep it on my keys. Little tiny guy just runs off one AAA. So these are good ones too. So yeah, I like the. All right, guys, I'm gonna have to go. Sorry about that. Sorry to cut hey, it short. Hey, no problem, man. Take it easy, Wag. Thanks for being with us, bud. Yep. Check out everybody's right. channel on the panel. Oh, here we go. Okay, so that. Okay, now that's not. We got those in a tack pack, right? Did you get that in a tack pack also? No, I didn't get this one in the tech bag. Okay, I think they gave them to us a couple months ago. The Maglite Solitaire, is that what it is? Yeah, that's what this one is. Yeah. Those I are never even opened it. They're made in uh, Ontario, California, if I'm not mistaken. But um you get you got it, the I've noticed that the regular bulb mag lights are slowly starting to disappear off the store shelves. And they're kind of pushing you into the LED realm, which is almost double or triple the price. But those little guys are they're they're great little flashlights, man. I've I drop tested it, uh water, I've left it in water for an hour. Um beat it around, took it outside. They're great little, and they take up, I mean, they're less, they're about the size of a, a stick of chapstick, but they're even thinner. Yeah, so, I, I definitely need a bright light. I mean, you never know when you're going to run into a gremlin and, you know, so. Oh, definitely, well, definitely. Yeah, I carry the Streamlight Micro Stream. That's what it's this just is. a really small one. What are those, what are those costs? How much are we talking here, guys? Mine's the rechargeable one. It's 30 bucks, but I've oh, had this yeah. one for a couple of years. I mean, the finish is wore off of it, but it's perfect because whenever I'm working or doing something, I can Put oh my yeah, mouth and have hands free or uh, battery wise, can you replace the battery on that then if it goes out? Does it just use any rechargeable battery or is it a sealed unit or? Um, you usually can a couple hundred times before you have to worry about. Oh, here we go. Oh, there you go. Yeah, it's got a replaceable oh. battery. Oh nice, like the size okay. of a triple A. Cool, cool. Never taking it apart. Is that the one with the reversible clip? Where you can clip it like in a pocket or on yeah, like your yeah, hat it or has something. the yeah. double sided clip. Yeah, I picked mine up on Amazon and it was before Christmas or something, and so they they were running a sale. It was like you know buy two for the price of one or some oh, wow crazy okay. thing. This was a while ago, but yeah, yeah, no, that's not bad at all. And and I do have a video about carrying a flashlight when you're a blind guy, so if you okay. want to check that out. Well, it doesn't mean you can't help others, you know. I mean, there's times where you don't know when, when the power is going to go out, especially depending on where you live and what kind of environment you're in. So, yeah. Hey, uh, Tony, what about you, man? You got any any EDC items? You know, we aside from, say, maybe a handgun, is there any, you got a, a pocket knife preference or a light preference? We've talked about knives and flashlights before, but what uh, what works for you, Tony? Uh, pretty much I carry a three-bladed pocket knife, the gun, and – Something nobody's mentioned is a way to start a fire. Oh yes, yes, yes. You can get like a carry like a little like a little uh, flint in your pocket, or you can just keep it like in one of your one of your jackets, or keep it in your glove box, or whatever. Uh, or just a put a big, just a little big flashlight or a big uh, lighter. Big lighter or a book of matches. Okay. And just anything if you get out and about and you're stranded, you need to make some heat. Mm -hmm. I think what like Carmex or chapstick, if you put it on a little cotton ball or piece of fabric, you can actually use it as a fire source to get you need to get some tinder going or whatever they call it. Get your get some sticks burning or burn some paper or whatever to get a fire going. So that's yeah. I yeah. just reminded that because winter ain't going away for some reason. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good point. I know I try to keep uh like in my little carry bag, I've got band-aids in there, little containers, some ibuprofen in it. Uh 
little mini med kit it has like some some uh, pads you can use for for wiping things off and yeah it's not a bad idea any other ideas out there some edc essentials we got the flashlight the gun the knife the pen or pencil is a good one source oh. of fire yeah. One thing you hear a lot of people on YouTube say is you have to carry a tourniquet. Not that it oh. would be a good <laughs> idea to carry a tourniquet yeah. or yeah. if you've got a place to put it, carry a tourniquet, that you have to. All right. Um, and I'm I'm old school. I learned first aid old school, but I've taken several first aid classes since then. My tourniquet is my belt. And for the people who go, that doesn't work. Okay you took a different class. I don't know what to tell you. I'm not saying it's the best tourniquet, but it does work. You can use a t-shirt as a tourniquet too. If you're in that, that bad of a situation. My thing is if I fill them full of holes, I'm not patching those holes. Uh, they earned that they can keep them. But um, if it's somebody else, if it's a bystander um, and I'm trying to control the bleeding until we can get first responders in there, or get them to a emergency room, you know, I'm going to use the resources I've got. Now, if, yeah. If I've got, I mean, I did a video on my Manny pack. I suppose I could, I could shove a tourniquet in there, but some of these people, I think they're just trying to put by, they, they, when the people that say you must have a tourniquet, then turn around and say, buy my tourniquet. <laughs> so, yeah, that's um, true. I mean, I do just as a, just in my little med kit over here off to my side, but, uh, and as far as an EDC, I, if you want to carry one, carry one. If you've got room for it, carry one. I mean, you could carry a CPR mask. You could keep a pair of, of surgical gloves in, in a little kit as well, too, because you're trying to create a barrier between you and that other person because you don't know what they've got. Mm. That's why they always put on gloves before they, they do, you know, EMTs or, or at the hospital. It's it's not necessarily what you can give them. It's what they can get. You don't know. They're, they're unconscious or whatever. They're not disclosing something. There's HIPAA laws. I mean, so depending on what size of um, uh, pouch or, or whatever you, you've got, uh, if you've got a Manny Pack 2, um, if you want to put something in there and first aid stuff, just think about how compact it is. But if you do put something in there like gloves, mm. just understand that they're going to degrade over time. Oh, yeah. So you're going yeah. to put those things on. I mean, I recommend nitrile gloves and the yeah. thickest mill you can get, you know, get like eight mil gloves. Um, they're less likely to tear puncture and, and they'll last a little bit longer, but, um, first aid is kind of bulky. So, I mean, that's probably more something you would keep in your car, keep in your range bag or whatnot. But yeah, I just hear a lot of that on the internet. You must carry a tourniquet. It's like, all right, man. Well, I mean, you know, and a person might want to get some training on how to use it first before they decide to do that. So that's, you know, that's another part of it. Hell, I mean, um, if I went to a tourniquet, I think I would go with like a 12 foot piece of paracord. It's not a bad idea. I mean, because you can use just about anything you can tie, right? That's that's going to hold tight. That's gonna that's not going to break. And it's right. thick. You use that paracord yeah. for other stuff too. Well, I think the paracord. I'd use the paracord if I had nothing else. If I if I had a belt or a t shirt, I'd use that first because it's a little bit wider, and you're you're going the way you're going to get your pressure on there. You're you know, but I mean, something's better than nothing. But um, yeah, it's just you know, as far as EDC, I mean you've only got so much room in your pockets. You've only got so much room here and there. So sometimes it's a little bit difficult to be all packed out. Yeah. We've got a few uh, suggestions coming in from the YouTube side over here. Uh, Frank Hamlin was saying snow chains are good to have. Uh, let's see what else we got going on here. Uh, somebody had mentioned some, uh, a taser, a small Garrett Wade knife, uh, mace or pepper spray. Not a bad idea. A good nine in one screwdriver. Yeah, it's not a bad idea. Old pill bottle with cotton ball soaked in Vaseline. Yeah, I think I've seen that on a Such video before. Because you can but use that. There's some of these things easy. that, like the screwdrivers and some. Sorry to cut you off, Travis. Oh, no, it's all good. Go ahead, man. Yeah, I'm just looking uh, at the comments. But yeah. You know, having some of this stuff as part of your bug out pack or your get home pack in your vehicle, but that's for uh, is a solid idea. But there's some of these things like the nine in one screwdriver. I don't think you necessarily need to carry on your person. Depends yeah, on. Yeah, I don't think you're going to carry whatever. snow chains on your person. No, and I, where do you live that you need to have Vaseline soaked <laughs> cotton balls as your EDC? 
I don't know. I, I get, so, it depends on your environment. Depends on how far you are from civilization. What your job is. Like Liberty's Warrior over here says that he carries a folding box cutter with a pocket clip for you know everyday cutting, but then keeps the pocket knife for defensive use, which is not a bad idea if you work in a place where you're allowed to have a box cutter and you cut boxes and have to deal with opening and slicing through stuff. That you know stuff that would make sense. Um, again, Bic lighters are a good one. Uh, phone charger for when the phone needs juice. Yeah, I have a have a phone cable. I don't know if I'd have it in my pocket all the time. Those little juice packs are kind of handy if you're going to be out and about the whole day. You can sometimes get like maybe 40, 50 percent charge out of one of those little cheap juice packs that you can buy that have, that's rechargeable. Uh, Mag light, Surefire stream light. Those are all good lights. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to see if there's anything else that people are mentioning right now. I protect from Bass Pro is thirteen dollars. Yeah, yeah. So again, those are kind of some of the basics. If you at least don't have that, a good place to start is just a decent knife. Now, for myself, um, the EDC is going to be my Ruger EC9S with my hidden hybrid holster. Got that going on. Okay. And then uh, mini maglite, like we showed before, these little maglite solitaires. These little, these little guys are awesome. I'm not sure. Uh, Gunstop, how many how many lumens are these things? Does it say? If, 47. Uh, 47 lumens? I. I mean, it's actually fairly. It's surprisingly bright outside. I mean, it works well. I can I can light up in total black. I can light up the basement enough to see where I'm going or outside. It's decent. And then for uh, my knife, and again, I I got to go along with Liberty's Warrior because this, while I love having it with me, just having this uh, this is the Kershaw Emerson folding knife. I got this from Melvin Nutt. He sent it to me. This is a great defensive knife, but again, it's a bit of a pain to whip this out. And open boxes and stuff. With, I mean, it's really awkward because it's almost too large for just slicing open boxes. So I like the idea of having either a smaller blade or having a foldable box cutter. Uh, that's something I should really have around the house. I keep going back to my old box cutter that I – I still have my box cutter that I used when I was in high school working in the grocery store because back then you could have box cutters when you weren't 18 years old. And um, the little slide one that has a little razor on the end of it that you can take the blade out and change it. Um, most Those are – I wouldn't say they're necessarily dangerous. They really have no way to lock close, but – uh, those work really well too. Not a bad idea. Anything else, guys? I carry a Milwaukee utility knife about every day. Oh, there we go. There we go. Folding. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I use my Leatherman Wave constantly at home, at work. I mean, it 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 does the job. I, I will say that um, I had a Leatherman confiscated by the TSA, and that was heartbreaking. I oh. mean. I, I got it as a gift from one of my contractors, and uh, yeah, I just I realized when I was walking up to the security checkpoint that I had it on my my belt, and I just pulled it right off my belt and just handed it to the guy. And oh, oh man, you know, it's just a nice Enjoy my wife saw, Well, my wife saw how heartbroken I was, and she went and got me a replacement for Father's Day, and I've held on to that thing, and um, I am now conscious of the fact that. If we're getting on a plane, make sure that's in the uh, yeah. in the check bag. Do not do not even attend. I mean, I, I I just had I was so used to wearing it. I can understand a little bit to some extent some of the people saying, you know, I didn't know I had a gun on me because I'm so used to wearing it. But I don't know. I'm I'm a little bit more when I carried a gun every day or even when I didn't. You know, just part time. I was more conscious of having a gun on me than a multi tool. I know that sounds kind of silly, but. Eh. I, yeah, I just think it's a bit ridiculous that you can't have a pocket tool with you on your airline flights. I mean, it, you know, but again, it's, it's, it's a blade. Okay. I, I guess I get it. I don't know. I think it's I mean, what are you, are you going to really take down the whole plane with a multi-tool? I mean, really I mean, the take down the plane with box cutters. So, you know, I mean, uh, yeah. And everybody, yeah, but, but see, that's just it though. Back then they thought that what was going to happen was what it always happened. Is they're going to demand they land somewhere and ask for, you know, uh, people to be released from, from prison or, or whatever it is, you know, they're going to have their demands met. They didn't expect them to fly them into buildings or, or do a suicide but, dive with them. Yeah. And so everybody just said, screw it. I'm not, but nowadays if somebody pulled out, I don't care what they pulled out. Everybody would bum rush them. Oh yeah. Nobody so, wants to, nobody wants to. Yeah. I agree. Totally. You see how, how people act when somebody gets out of line on a plane people immediately go put that person down or restrain yeah. them. They're not, they don't want to take chances because so, they're worried about their lives and their families. So, so at this point, I don't care if you pulled out a Rambo knife, it, you're not going to take the plane. So yeah. it's, it's kind of a, uh, it's kind of ridiculous, especially some things. I mean, a little pocket knife. I mean, if you, if it's legal to carry, around in your pocket it should just be legal i mean at first they were they were taking nail clippers i think that you can take those now 
you know, yeah. so it's just, it's, it's a little bit ridiculous, but Hey, whatever. Yeah. But um, yeah, for anybody out there, if you're flying and you normally carry a multi-tool on your hip and I mean, this is, this is your thing. This is your, um, or not on your hip, but on your belt. And, I mean, you use this thing constantly. Just be, be uh, conscious of uh, the fact that you cannot bring it on an aircraft, even though it's your EDC. Yeah. I, I have a suggestion for something. If you're on a plane, you always you can take your sock off with a, a soda can that's full. You can do what? Take your sock off with a and put a soda can in it. Oh, yeah. like yes. You don't find the head with that. I'm telling you, you're going to have a bad day. Yeah. At, yes, so, yes. So there's always something that you can use. You just there you go. To, just got to improvise, man. You, you look silly with one sock. That might have to be next week's though. topic, like non-weapon defensive tools. <laughs> <laughs> non-weapon based defensive tools. Let's. What do we use in middle school? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> hey, Travis, I'll just Yo. take a couple of those 4K cameras and yeah. put them in a sock and <laughs> <laughs> that battery man that battery will hit you hard so all i care is that i can pull the micro sd card out of it later you know yes, yes. oh yeah you should be fine with those, those things will survive they'll last longer than the camera will but hey real quick i gotta get a plug in i want to thank uh, southpaw rx for the sweet mug today it is officially empty so i've now i've gone over to round two before we go into the second part so this is the uh, mossberg mcs mc1 sc mc w r1 and it does take glock mags uh coffee mug so no i'm just kidding yeah, speaking but, of coffee, I need, you know, I'll be right back. And get I noticed I've been using proper trigger control the whole time I was drinking out of it. I was not, uh, you know, I was not, you know, muzzle flashing you guys or whatnot. So, v really nice. I mean, it fits the hand well. It's really easy to chamber that first round. It's got nice sights on it. It's 100 percent ceramic. It goes, it goes through uh, airport metal detectors with no problems. <laughs> does it have an external safety? Um, yes, it does. Right here. Good. There okay, you go. Right good. there. It's got an external safety. So if anybody wants that, it's uh, ambidextrous. All the way around, you can. And it's got this little gap where you can tear out the mag if you need to tear it out. You can. Uh, sorry, I won't make a tabletop review out of it. But anyway, Southpaw, I want to thank you for this, man. This is awesome. This is awesome. It it matches my. Uh, it goes along with the Ruger really well. So. Oh, man. So let's go on to the second part here. Now, this, okay, what we're going to talk about, depending on where you are, depending on what your resources are, depending on the local price, I upped it from 400 to 500 because I really had trouble coming up with this. Uh, this this original title was going to be a $400 rifle, pistol, or handgun combo. Does that even exist? And we're talking, but then I thought I want to be able to go, you know, like like self defense or defensive or something you could happily travel with, right? So, what would be some ideas and suggestions? So I upped it to five hundred dollars. Okay, hey uh, Tony, we're getting a little bit of feedback on your end, buddy. Might have you mute if you're not uh, if you're not talking. Um, but uh, that, anyway, that might have been me. Sorry. Oh, I was seeing hearing like a clicking the whole time that was going off. But uh, so anyway, Calaveras and I were talking about this beforehand, and his prices out in California are way above. It's 25, 30% more than what I pay here in Nebraska. So I've got four suggestions. We'll get to me at the end. But, uh, again, I don't want to go we'll, – we'll just let you guys chime in. You can say whatever you want. If you have any ideas for suggestions for a $500 defensive rifle, pistol, new or used combo. Let's say you got 500 bucks. You want to get yourself a rifle. You want to get yourself a pistol. We're not talking tax. We're not talking shipping. We're not talking FFL transfer fees or even ammo for that matter. But you just want to get set up with two guns. What would you guys suggest? What would work well for you? Any ideas? I've been searching, and to find it new is tough for the defensive rifle thing. Other than a high point carbine, you're pretty much down to a bolt action or single well, shot rifle. You got to think, though. New. Okay. If you go to PSA, you can do a $200 upper and $129 lower. So $329 will get you into an AR without a mag and without a rear sight. So you could get a, a you could get an AR for three thirty, and with PSA and where I wasn't talking tax or transfer fees, because some people may or may not have to pay those things. Um, you could easily get yourself set up for three fifty with an AR fifteen from PSA, delivered. Yeah. Now that's now that's that's not restricted states. You know, there's going to be more of a cost for those rifles. So that's one option, but it is very hard to find something other than going with a bolt action rifle, I mean, like an entry level. Yeah. Personally, if I was going to do it, I would go buy a Savage Axis and a probably a either an SD nine or if you can find a Security mm -hmm. nine on sale. Yeah, because those are both around two fifty. What caliber would you think for the set for the Axis? Would you go two twenty three Remington or would you go no. three hundred eight or odd six? I've got an Axis in twenty two to fifty and wouldn't trade it for the world. That's my okay. feed truck gun, okay. coyote killing gun. But I'd probably go three hundred eight for cost okay. of ammo. Okay. Oh, that's true. That's true. 
Yeah, it's just if you want to get set up. Calaveras, is there anything you could do where you're at in your neck of the woods for 500? Is it possible to pull off? How much How much is a high point carbine there? Okay, high point carbine is $250 on Bud's guns for a non-California compliant model. So that'd be um, 250 but yeah. I've only ever seen the high point carbine in one store out here, and I don't recall what the price is. I'm currently looking up a uh, local you... uh, used gun shop. Okay. I'm trying to see what their prices are. Can you buy something California compliant and have it shipped to California? Can you go off of Buds and buy a California compliant gun and go to your local FFL and transfer? If you have a local <laughs> FFL willing to do the transfer, yes. Okay. Okay. So it might be more of a challenge for you than to be able to pull off any kind of a man. So what, what's, what's, what's just an entry level AR cost you where you are? What would it cost you if you just go to the store and buy one? Uh... 650. Yeah. You're probably talking for a standard, what sixteen inch five five six? Yeah. Uh, yeah that's right. Now I hear you guys talk about, or I've heard some of the people talk about, like the Deltons and some of the other mm -hmm. inexpensive brands. I've never seen those on the shelf. Mm -hmm. uh, I've seen the Smith and Wesson M and P on the shelf for six or more. Oh wow! Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean that's for. Yeah, the pricing out here you can generally assume is going to be approximately you know, an easy fifty, you know, fifty to sixty percent higher than what you guys are paying. Yeah, Tony Nagy's chiming in. He says uh, two hundred seventy bucks for an old beat up SKS and then an old cheap three eighty ECP in Canada, and that's about it. Yeah, SKS is here in the U.S. If you get one from Classic or anybody else, you're four hundred dollars, if not more. I mean, maybe you can get an SKS for three fifty locally. You might find one at a gun store at a gun, you know. But new or not new, but anything you're buying from a lot of the major distributors, you're looking at four hundred or more for an SKS. So I mean, you know, the okay. days of the hundred fifty dollar SKS is pretty much gone. But yeah, yeah, that's true. Well, just here's a. I don't know how competitive this price is, but local uh, gun exchange store, so kind of a used gun store. Mm -hmm. uh, Smith and Wesson SD nine, you know, uh, VE four hundred nine. Oh my god. Wow. 350 brand new, dude. Everywhere out here. 350. You can find them on sale brand oh. new for like 250, 250. Yeah, I bought mine used for two two hundred dollars used at the at the pawn shop. And that was the retail price that anybody else would have paid. Yeah. Two 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 hundred or two twenty or something like that. Wow. So okay, we might have to hunt around a little bit for the California folks because we're trying to go beyond like a heritage rough rider and like a cricket rifle. I mean, we're trying to come up with something that be. I mean, not that you couldn't defend yourself with those, but you know, like like something that could handle some some heavy use if necessary. You know, there's a Phoenix Arms twenty two long rifle pistol for one forty two. That's about thirty or forty bucks over. That's about thirty bucks more than what they sell for normally. Okay. Yeah. So. Okay, so you'd have to hunt around a little bit. Okay, okay. Uh, of course, Spectrum 380, 200 bucks. Hey, you know what? I had to ask, you know what? The High Point uh, CF380, what does mm -hmm. it sell for out there? Uh, are we talking the pistol or the carbine? The, the pistol? Those are 149. That's one of the least expensive High Point. And then, but see, then you go to like, okay. a, then you go to 9 or a 40, and they're 155, like okay, 159 the, for the 45. The reason I asked is they have one here for 190. Oh my dude, that's like MSRP on that thing. Uh oh, gun sounds pulling something out. I like that gun case you got there, dude. Yeah, yeah. I bet you enjoyed I mean, making that gun case, didn't you? I did. <laughs> hey, hey, there you go. Look at that. There you go, Calaveras. There yeah, you go. go. That's the uh, the Crenshaw Drive edition. Is that what that is? Is that mm -hmm. yeah? Okay. Whoo, man. All right. So yeah, so you got some options there. You got some so. Uh, Calvers, we're definitely going to have to hunt around. We could have just made uh, California five hundred dollar combo its own topic for today. That would have been that's like a research project. That's exhausting, <laughs> dude. Uh, people are kind of chiming in over on the the YouTube side right now. PSA had the shield for two fifty nine. Yeah, well, when we that's get to deal. my four, when we get to my four options, that was one of the ones I threw out there. Obviously, you got the two hundred dollar uh, or less or two ten uh, towards G two Cs, PT one eleven G twos. Uh, Ruger EC9S is two hundred twenty dollars. Oh, Sam of Anarchy has a question for you, Calvers. How for much it. does a Glock seventeen or Glock nineteen cost in California? You'd have to get a Gen three, right? If you wanted to be able to get one on the registry, can you even get a Gen four? Well, let's see here. Glock seventeen uh, is listed on this current website at five ninety. Oh, used or new? 
Uh, not sure on this one. If it's used, that's about two hundred dollars more than I think you could probably pick one up. New, that's a that's not bad. I mean, out here, I mean, Cabela's has them for five fifty. I think SS Pond, I think I get them for around five five forty nine. Cabela's is usually six hundred. So that's yeah, that's not Gen bad. 3s. Oh, they're Gen threes though. Well, I mean, they still yeah. new. If you get a new Gen three, they still sell for almost as much as the Gen four, maybe fifty bucks less. Um, yeah, the, and it comes with one ten round magazine. Oh yeah. my gosh! Well, hey, I mean that is an option, but wow. Yeah. Uh, David, what about you? Is there anything you could do out there in your neck of the woods, out on the East Coast, Kingpin? You know, uh, you could definitely go with the Ruger Security Nine. It would mm -hmm. cost you right around three three fifty here after taxes and stuff, and then High Point Carbine. But so I, yeah. all joking aside, if you're on a five hundred dollar budget and you want a pistol and a and a rifle, I'd go High Point both ways. Yeah. Another thing to think about with the High Point is you got mag interchangeability. You know, if you want to go, I don't know about the forty and forty five mags and the carbines working with the pistols, but I know that the nines are interchangeable between the pistol and the carbine. Um, now think about it. if you got your, so let's just say you didn't pay the California prices. Let's say you could get the two hundred fifty dollar High Point carbine and the hundred fifty dollar High Point handgun. That'd be four hundred dollars before tax, many times you wouldn't pay a transfer fee because they have those in local gun stores. You can then use the rest of the money to buy ammo and magazines. They make a little two mag carrier that you can put on the stock of the carbine and all that would be interchangeable. You know, and again, nothing, you could certainly go used. There's the used market, gun gun shows, your your local pawn shops and, and gun stores. You might be able to get a good deal on a used rifle, you know, like a nice solid used rifle or maybe even a bolt action. Um, and sometimes used prices can be almost as much as new. So, hey, Patriot, do you have any suggestions at all? Anything you could think of? What? I think we all kind of keep coming back to the same point. You know, and that's I spent days, like evenings, looking through this, looking at the price listings and stuff, trying to figure out what your options are. What do you think, man? Well, I, I was going to say a Mosin, but they're way too expensive now. So. Sure. 350 <laughs> maybe 400 delivered. Cabela's is 349 for a beat-up ratty one. So yeah, for a hundred dollars less, you can get a Savage Axis. I bought my Mosin for one twenty nine five years ago, and that's that's when they were or one and when Cabela's had them, they had a big shipment of them come in, and I got a, a like a nineteen twenty five hex or one of the last years for the hex receivers, paid one twenty seven for it. So yeah, the Mosin's not even an option. I mean, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. I would definitely look at you know some of the lever guns as far oh, as yes. you know local mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. with your, with your used market or something. A lot of you know, a lot of young guys might not you know jump at that, and there might be something sitting there that's pretty dusty. I well, have a lever usually, gun. What's that? I was just gonna say you can usually find a three thirty six and thirty thirty mm -hmm. used in you know not perfect condition for two fifty to three hundred easily. Walmart has brand new three thirty sixes for three forty seven at our Walmart. I just saw one yesterday when I was there. Now I was reading the reviews on on the newer ones that people they still have problems. Um, it's kind of interesting, and I just want to get this out there. They sell a three thirty six scoped combo for less than the price of the unscoped three thirty six over on. I've seen this on Classic, and I think over on Buds, it's like four ninety one. But when you read the reviews on the scoped combo, everybody's complaining about canned sights. So I don't know if Marlin just decided to throw an optic and a rail on the top of this thing, thinking somebody would never use the iron sights on it. There's five or six separate reviews, hmm. recent reviews where people are saying, yeah, I bought it, but my, my sights at like the one o'clock position instead of the 12 or my rear sight is, is off and I can't adjust it. So I don't know if that's how they're getting those slowly put out into the market. And here's the problem. And uh, those, 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 um, Pre Freedom Group 336s are, are skyrocketing in price now. Anything made before what 06, before the transition came over, when who bought them out? Remington bought them out, moved them to move the factory to New York or whatever. I I could be totally off on this, but um, they're they're going for five, six, seven, seven, six hundred fifty dollars right now for a Pre Freedom Group 336. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you just like I said, check check you can check the market prices on them. And Gun Broker is an awful place to go for prices but that's kind of the realistic that's one of the first places people go to sell if they don't go local um the one that i bought at ss pond i think i paid 550 but it was solid i mean it was really nice and it's part of it too is uh, i was talking to a buddy of mine and he, he collects lever guns he says that they used to make the internals out of you know uh like like solid forged tool steel for the internals on those 336s and they don't do that anymore and a lot of guys now are complaining on the new reviews i was reading about having sloppy actions and stuff but that was even one of my suggestions too that i'm going to throw out there the fact you could get one for 350 if you don't mind maybe 
tinkering around with it a little bit, maybe beefing it up a little bit, going through it, giving it a good cleaning, and you know, checking out the internals. Yeah, and that's right. Um, if you're on a budget, you know what? You don't necessarily need a thousand yard tack driver. No, no. If yeah, thirty thirty would do the job. I mean, that would almost be ideal because there's no magazines you got to buy. Sights are already on it, right out right, of the store. You can put rounds in, and you know, you know, so even with the loose tolerance internals, as long as even if it's not the smoothest of actions, if it functions and can put a round on a dinner plate out to yep. 100, 125 yards, yep. it would, you know what, it would be better than nothing. I know my 1949 Marlin 336 is pretty solidly built. It's a heavy, oh. it's a heavy little sucker. They are. They're very so, heavy. Yeah, yeah. But and with a little tell. bit of practice, you can run a lever gun fast if you need to. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that's really. I thought it was hilarious. I was listening to a video. I can't remember what which one it was, but uh, they're talking about oh, those are lever guns. You know, uh, you know, you have to take them off your shoulder to work the lever because it's awkward to run them from the shoulders. Like what the huh. heck? Just running them from the shoulder is easy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can't do it if you're prone out, of course. But if you're, you know, what uh, sitting, kneeling, standing, whatever, running it from the shoulder is easy. And if you can't find a solid 336, I was reading comments that people had said that, you know, I was reading the reviews on the 336s. A couple guys had chimed in and said that they, that their Rossi Rio Grands, their 3030s, which are four to $500 used, um, they're solid too. I've never had one, but that's another, I mean, there's so many lever guns out there, but yeah, I mean, a $350 lever gun and then a $150 handgun of some type uh, would be the way to go. You might be able to negotiate locally if you can do local sales. Uh, or private sales on on a handgun, you might be able to pick up something used that'll work well for you too. Um, That's one of the Taurus eighty five. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say just even a revolver, you know, just to have something, right? And you might want to ask, you know, if you bundle them, you know, if you're you're going to a shop and you find, you know, two, they might be able to adjust that price a little bit. If you say, hey, I want to buy both of these. Yeah, yeah. Which, uh, and I was going to give everybody just a word of warning since I'm still against them. They've got Sky CPX twos for 169 on PSA. Don't buy one. Just get a <laughs> just get a G2C. I mean, like I said, I, at some point I may give may give Sky another another chance just to see if they've improved at all. Buy another one and just test it. But I can't bring myself to spend money on it. Well, so don't don't fall for that trap. Spend 250 and get a shield if you're going to do anything. I mean, that's my that's suggestion. Your, but. If you need a paperweight, it'll work just fine. <laughs> Man, I mean, it might run the first 50 rounds, but but you might say, well, that's all you need. Well, good luck practicing with it, you know. Uh, so, anywho, Squib, do you have any ideas? Can you come up with something, a $500, a, a good pistol? I was thinking Star BM, if you don't mind tinkering. That's $180. Uh, Star BM 9mm pistol would work for you as an option. $500, a defensive rifle pistol combination. Can't touch it. Okay. Well, it. you you can you can like I said, I'll I'll throw my suggestions out there. But again, we're not talking, not including transfer fees, not including sales tax and or shipping, depending on how you go. Uh, you can get you can get into something around that price, but it'd be easier to go say a shotgun and a handgun combo, and then run slugs with the shotgun if you need to. That'd be much doable, much more doable. You know. Oh I yeah, mean, definitely. You know, I could throw out there get some Milser pan gun and get yourself yep. a Ruger ten twenty two, but I really don't consider that a defensive rifle handgun combo. If you're, if this is defensive, if this is to protect your life, um, either, you know, save a little bit longer and get mm-hmm. something nicer, better, or just put it on the credit card and worry about it later. But yeah, I, I just, I can't come up with something that I would recommend for that. That's a low dollar. I could get you one for Dude, 500 bucks. Maybe I try doing it at 400. I'm like, how am I going to pull this off? Unless I went used and, or negotiated locally, there's no, and I don't want to go with like a cricket or and, just say a savage bolt action 22, you know? And I understand that the question might've come from a younger person who yeah. doesn't make as much money yet because yeah, they're yeah. newer in the workforce and they're struggling. They're starting out. Believe me, I remember those days and they just want to get into guns and they want to have something like that. But my advice would be to save up and get something nicer. If you do start off with something real low quality or, or just inexpensive or, or just cheap, okay, depending, it'll if you have no idea about guns, it'll at least give you an idea of what you don't want in the future. And you can you can sell it probably at a loss or trade it in towards a purchase of something better. But I mean, if you're in a hurry to get into something, um, you know, I mean, everybody gets that itch and, and, you know, you want to, you want to spend some money, but if you don't have a whole lot, it's, it's, it's really tough to make. I mean, I'll give you an example. My first gun, $74 used SKS. What a piece of crap. (laughs) What a piece of crap. 
you know. Um, but did it, it run though? Did it run? No, no, it's oh, garbage. Okay. Okay, I would, I would, okay. no, I, I shoot somebody else's SKS, but I'll never own one again. <laughs> I don't know why um, people like those pieces of junk, but um, tell I us mean, how you really feel, Squib. <laughs> buy once cry once if you get something that's inexpensive but it's it's reliable that's one thing but if you just get something cheap just because you're trying to you're trying to either get your first gun or you're you got that itch you know i just think you'll you'll regret it and 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 i i'd, I'd rather wait and save up i've got a different look at this before we go on one other thing what if you buy a good quality defensive handgun for you know you can get a used MMP or Glock mm -hmm. oh, yeah, or three hundred dollars for three fifty at easy, most easy uh -huh. at most and then just buy a cheap break action single shot rifle and just not call it a defensive rifle per se yeah um, have a rifle Scott P seventy nine was saying you know those what those New England firearms or those CVA break actions you can mm -hmm. get them in various calibers uh, four fifty Bushmaster four fifty eight SOCOM three hundred eight they might even do an odd six, 243, 270. I mean, you could have defensive and or hunting combo if you were out and about, you know, if you're out on your own, um, you know, and those have mounts for optics on them and they've got sling mounts on them. I mean, it'd be easy to get around. So that would be another, I, I mean, I, yeah, I never said you couldn't do a break action. I wasn't even thinking of that. So Scott, thank you for that suggestion on the YouTube side. Um, I didn't see any, anything over on the gun channel side. Tony, do you, Tony, the what would you do? It's acting up. Yeah, you're probably going to have to refresh that page in order to I see did. The, the chat. Yeah, I just did. Unfortunately, I didn't see any new comments posted, so that's all right. Uh, Tony, what about you? Any ideas? If you had 500 bucks in your pocket, Tony, and you wanted a rifle handgun combination, what would you do, Tony? You might be getting a cup of coffee. Tony, you still with us? Buy a cheap, cheap handgun and just rob somebody with an expensive rifle. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I came up that with was more advice to David Bowling. No, this, this is a guy who lives near Baltimore giving advice. So just Please take remember, it for it the views expressed on Caliber Corner are not those of Travis P11's channel. Okay, these are <laughs> high viewer, re, viewer discretion is advised. So uh, I got four combinations I came up with this morning as I was eating my toast. So we've got. Uh, High point carbine, high point pistol, and any caliber you want, 40, 45, 380, or 9. I would almost go with like a 40 or a 45 if I'm going to go that route. Maybe have something that packs a little more punch because you can run plus BMOs and you can run plus BMO in those all day. 400 bucks for me. Okay, I'm just looking stuff up on Classic and Buds. You could also go with a high point carbine for 250. Um, they're 250, 260 for an entry level one, and they go up from there. I mean, you can add all the accessories on them and stuff. And then for 250, you could get yourself. What did I, I did? A, I did a filter over on Classic Firearms. I set the price at two hundred fifty dollars. There were three hundred and seventy-seven handguns you could choose from that were two hundred fifty dollars and below. I actually set it for two forty. Um, but the thing is, not all those are going to be in stock. Now, about a third of those are going to be Heritage Rough Riders and Heritage Rough Rider variants. But you could get yourself you could get yourself a Shield for two fifty when they're on sale. Two fifty two sixty. Maybe a Ruger 9E. I don't know. I think that's more of a $300 gun. SD9 VEs are uh, $350, but you can pick them up used. They're sometimes on sale for $250. G2C, G2S. Uh, there's a lot of options in the $250 range. So you could go high point carbine and then a $250 hanger. Ruger EC9S is 220 um, That's another option for you, too. You could buy that and a couple more mags for $250. And then the third option I came up with was 350 for a Palmetto State Armory AR. You could buy some inexpensive flip-up iron sights and a $10 mag. You can be in business for 350 And then you can get yourself a high point for 150 And there are other options you can get. Yeah, there's 94 options for handguns that are below $150 on classic firearms. There's 34 that were actually in stock. So, you know, you might be looking at, you know, Jimenez or Phoenix Arms, High Point, or Heritage, right? Heck, even a 22 Magnum Heritage Rough Rider revolver would not be something bad to consider. Um, and then my last option would be go with the $350 Walmart Marlin 336 CS, go through it, clean it up, kind of kind of get it checked out a little bit, and then anything for 150 that you could come up with. So you could do that, but then again, the break action single shots are another option too. So that's something you could do too. Oh, hey, so there's there is sure. you know, break action single shot that is pulled up, you know, uh, one of the local gun stores around here just for kicks. Uh, CVA Hunter Compact Rifle, which I've never heard of before. Oh, no. yeah. Yeah, it's short barrel. Yeah. Uh, 230, and it can, you know, uh, in uh, 243 Winchester. 
Now it's a little bit pricey to shoot, but still that's going to work for you. Um, yeah, that's where in 270 you can get 6.5 Creedmoor in the same rifle. It Buds is selling that for 211 for a 243 compact with the with the scope with the optic rail. Uh, man, you can yeah, get any I mean, caliber you want in those in those little CVAs. That might be the way to go. I mean, you can just practice with it a little bit. Here's 44 mag, uh, CVA Scout, uh, stainless steel for 335. You can get them in camo with the scope, 4570 break action for 250. That would do the job at close range. 450 oh, Bushmaster. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's you've got a, a lot of options. Now you're gonna say, well, yeah, but it's just single shot. Okay, well, you got your handgun. You could take your first shot with your rifle and then fall back on your pistol if you had to. I'm just saying whatever kind of scenario you run into. But even a, a single shot, I'm not going to say you should have it necessarily for home defense, but if you had nothing else, even those compact models with like a 16 or 18 inch barrel, those would be relatively easy to maneuver around your property, say in brush or, or whatnot. So it's an inexpensive option if you don't have other. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not perfect for anything, but it yeah. could work. I mean, it's, it's, I would rather have you have something that's going to run for you, something that you know how to use and be able to defend yourself than have nothing at all. I mean, that's just the simple, or again, like Squib says, just charge it, pay it off, or just put back a little more money. But for somebody that has an immediate need now that needs a gun or wants guns or has property they need to protect or whatever, you know, you never know what kind of a scenario you're going to run into. Right. Um, yeah. But that's for like a, uh, you know, my grandfather years ago when, you know, he had a rifle that my great grandfather had given him. He got out of uh, high school, started went to work for the uh, Forest Service. Was had a, took his rifle with him because he was stationed. You know, he was sent out to a pretty remote area. Mm -hmm. Came back to his hotel room one one day after work, and someone had kicked in the door and stole a rifle. So he needed something ASAP. That's actually when where he ended up getting the uh, Marlin three three six. Yeah, that that I end up having now. But in a situation I, like that where you're, okay, you know the air, it's a rough area, you should have something with you ASAP. You know what? Uh, saving up and then buying something else is not always an option. Something like this would work. I, honestly, I would rather have a lever gun over a California compliant AR. Me personally, I guess I would just rather have the lever gun because it's just – can you guys get lever – yeah, you can get lever guns in California, right? Yes. No, no. I mean, there. I think I saw six plus one. I don't know if that's correct or not. Is what I saw for the capacity, but still, you know, like you said, if you can learn how to operate one, you know. Yeah, and that's for take it to the range a few times and actually just shoot it. You can learn to work them pretty quick. That's where I didn't have any training on my three three six. Yeah, and even with mine being chambered in thirty two Winchester Special, the kick is similar to a thirty thirty. I can run that thing, and you know what? Uh, I mean, it, I probably should uh, pull it apart, and you know what? Uh, massage the internals a little bit so it's a little slicker because it does yeah. it is a little on the stiff side you know you can definitely feel some noticeable clunks so gun stop yeah speed. everybody yeah. in the chat came up with this plan i've seen a couple of them here you go yeah under 500 dollars oh. ar pistol so you've got both worlds covered you've got somewhat a rifle 300 blackout and a pistol with an optic you can build that under 500 yeah, well, I was Maybe I just I was just gonna say while Bill suggested the AR pistol, I just ordered yesterday yesterday morning uh, before I went to work, I ordered the uh, the PSA um, Magpul pistol lower with just the buffer tube on the back, one twenty nine delivered. Well, it was ten dollars for sales tax, so I got it for one thirty nine. And now I'm debating what to do. I really want to put a nice short upper on it that I can use just as a as a quick little truck under grab and go or just a range backup uh home defense i might go with like a eight and a half inch barreled uh 300 blackout or maybe like a seven and a half or a ten and a half inch problem i'm having right now is a lot of the short barreled uppers are not in stock anywhere um i'm having trouble finding them we're finding them at a decent price without going say bravo company or daniel defense and whatnot uh most of the psa short barreled uppers are are sold out there are a lot of ten and a half inch uppers that are out there and I, i've got a ten and a half inch ar but I would like to go even shorter than that just for simple transport. I'm just going to put the uh, the foam cover over the buffer tube, and I'm gonna trying to figure out what to do for an upper right now. I was actually looking at uh, Bear Creek Arsenal. They have their uppers for $199 and $209, and their shipping is $10. I may go. I may just break down and go with it. The, they got a 10.5-inch, uh, 300 or 556. Well, the 556 upper is, is $199 with the 10.5-inch. It's got the um, M-Lock rail on the front. And that's complete with a bolt carrier group, and it'd be ten dollars for shipping. So for two oh nine, I could get a ten and a half inch fully assembled upper delivered to the house to put on that pistol lower. Once I get the pistol lower, 
Um, so yeah, SS Pawn, I should probably tell you, there's a pistol or coming your way this week. Just want to give you a heads up. But I really want to go with something even more compact, but I'm having trouble finding it. And I don't want to go Radical Firearms because I had nothing but a bad experience with their upper SS last time I bought Pawn, you know, uh, Stan over at SS Pawn made a comment, eight and a half inch barrels are loud. Yeah, yeah, especially if the powder charge is set up for a longer barrel rifle, I could see that. Yeah, that's why I was probably going to go 300 blackout. Not that that's not going to have a good report on it, but I could also, if I wanted to, put a can on it, run some subsonic. It would almost make a nice all-around option. But, I mean, I can get into that to $210 upper, $140 lower, $130 lower. I mean, I'm getting into it for less than $350. Um, so that's not bad. I mean, not counting magazines and optics and stuff. I'm just going to put this time I decided I don't want to go with something with the fixed front A2. I don't want to get that 10 and a half inch upper. They're fantastic. They're awesome. Squib got to shoot mine. Um, but I just want to go with just the rail across the top so I can do flip up sights and a small optic on the top. Maybe do a hollow sun or just break down and get an aim point. So that's what I'm thinking about doing for an AR pistol. So yeah, that's a good suggestion. The AR pistol will give you the best of both worlds. You could spend 500 on that and be done. If as long as you live in a free space. One. Yeah, as long as you live in a state that'll let you have how it. How much can you buy? How much can you buy a complete one for? Because not four, everybody knows how to put one together. Four ninety nine. Well, if you buy a complete upper and a complete lower, you just pin the two together and that's it. I mean, that's all you'd have to do. You can buy them as two separate components. The lower goes through your dealer and the upper gets delivered to your home. And then you got your your front pin and your rear pin. Again, in states where you can't have them, you wouldn't have that option. They do sell complete 300 blackout, um, I think eight and a half inch uh, uh, AR pistols on PSA with the SIG brace on the back, the SB brace for 499. They have to charge about an extra 50 bucks. I think there's a surcharge they have on it that's taxed that's tacked onto every black rifle that gets sold. That's assembled. I think there's a I don't know if there's a fee or 20, 30, or 40 dollars on it. That's why if you buy the part separate, it's actually about 50 bucks cheaper to go that route so uh, yeah i know 499 they advertise them all the time on there otherwise i can get into one for for 350 if i buy the parts separate but yeah david that's a good point not everybody wants to mess with it they want to take it out of the box and just use it they don't want to mess with it and the 499 ones come with uh mbus flip up sites too which will save you about 80 dollars right there you now 50 dollars right there when they're not on sale so yeah, I mean, you got some options. There's a lot of options out there. But I guess, really, when you think about it, wow, Bill, good suggestion. Um, AR pistol, if you can have one, would be a perfect option for a lot of people. How do so, you guys feel know. about shopping at pawn shops for used guns? Oh, you can. I, and I can all, I'll, I, I'll hype up Stan. I've, I've bought probably five or six used guns from him just in the last year or two alone because I buy a lot of new guns, but I test a lot of guns, so I don't buy a lot of guns. I mean, I bought 12 last year. I bought... Two years ago, I bought 12 guns from him. This year, I think I bought five or six. And I, yeah, I mean, you know, you're buying it, you're, you're buying it without any kind of really ability to return it because it's an all sales final deal. But oh, buy Smith and Wesson, buy a Ruger. Um, you can send them in for repairs, and they've got uh, lifetime warranties on the on the guns. I mean, Ruger doesn't advertise that they have a lifetime warranty, but if you have a problem with your gun, you have it sent in and it gets fixed. I mean, Tony will attest to that. Um, so those companies do have lifetime Glocks, I think, are a three to five year warranty, but I've never sent a Glock in for repair outside of warranty, so I really can't comment. Um, high points are lifetime, Jimenez are lifetime, PSA is lifetime warranty. So, David, if you get one, I mean, you, you hope you don't want, run into any problems. I never have, but it doesn't mean you couldn't. So, um, yeah, uh, but Gunsnob, have you got any good, have you made any good uh, pawn shop purchases lately at all or? Uh, I haven't been buying guns lately. I've been buying camera stuff. So okay, yeah, me too. <laughs> reloading for me, reloading and looking at some new camera equipment. Um, so that's an option. But yeah, I mean, you can if you have cash, you might be able to negotiate on the price a little bit too, which is kind of nice. It depends on the size of the pawn shop, and uh, you know, they might be willing to budge on the price a little bit. So I've always had option. real good luck at pawn shops buying guns, and a lot of times you buy them there, and they've never hardly ever even been shot at, like especially bigger city ones. They just people buy yeah. them and then get in hard times well here, here's what i like about ss pawn i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna give them a little bit of a, a promotion here um i can you know anybody can order off of uh davidson's gun genie and have the gun shipped to stan and there's no transfer fee on that but there's just like a small fee that gun genie puts on every gun that gets sold that gets delivered you pay for part of the gun online and then you finish the payment in the shop and then you pick up the gun there but you can see the prices right there and you can see the competitor prices and many times they're they're 50 to 75 bucks below what i'd find at bass pro shops or cabela's for the exact same gun so that's why i always go to gun genie first and check the prices and then after that i'll go to go to buns or go to go to classic or anybody else atlantic firearms or whatnot so what you're saying is you're yeah. in the pocket of ss pawn 
Uh, no, Stan gets the money out of my pocket. So is he in my pocket? I don't know how that works because I give him the money and he gives me the guns. Is that how it works? I don't know. No, well, hey, but like I said, anybody can go to can go to Gallery of Guns and anybody can as buy the guns. As long as it's and, not out of a trunk in a parking lot, it's all good. <laughs> Oh, no, 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 no. In a parking lot. I have never. bought guns that way. <laughs> yeah, no, but no, but I that's, may that's may what I love about Gun Genie. Guns that way. Gun Genie shows you the competitors within like a 25 mile radius. So you can see what other stores charge too. So it keeps everybody honest with the prices or it keeps a, keeps the prices competitive, which is really cool too. So David, what's up? I'm sorry, man. Trunk parking lot guns have treated me very well. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Oh man! So, Tony, are you back with us, dude? You got your internet back on? I don't know. Is it working? Yeah. Well, we'd ask you a little question earlier, Tony. If you had five hundred bucks in your pocket, what rifle and handgun would you buy, new or used? Any suggestions at all? I would go with the High Point and the High Point carbine. Yeah. And nine millimeter. And okay. That's the money I'd spend on magazines. Would you guys consider going 40 just for something a little more powerful or 45 instead? No, Power factor on those is not much different. Nine millimeter, the increase in the carbine is really oh. good. Well, and the fact you can run the plus P ammo through it too, you could run some really hot rounds through that or roll your own and if really push you, the. If, if all you got for a handgun and a rifle is 500 bucks, yeah, I'd say go with nine millimeter because you're not going to be able to afford the ammo for anything else. No, this is true. This is true. I mean, but and and again, the person didn't tell me that they didn't have money for ammo. But if you want to go as inexpensive as possible, yeah, that's the way to do it. So, all right. Anybody else on the chat for that? What's that? The Frank Hellman in the chat made a comment about you know buying used guns is a gamble. You know, you pay less and take a chance. If you uh, are going to a good reputable place, and you know, and or you know what you're looking at, you can go through a firearm pretty thoroughly. And identify pretty, you know, pretty well if it's going to be a solid hit and gun or not. Would I necessarily go for a used AR? That's going to be more complicated, maybe not. But for a lever action or a revolver or some uh, one of the simpler designs, yeah, you can. If you know what you're looking at, you can, you know, uh, usually do pretty, you know, good at picking up a good quality used gun. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. When I bought the SD9VE at, at SS Pawn, I um I took the slide off of it. I checked out the guide rod in the spring. I looked at the barrel. I looked at the wear inside the slide, the the frame, and it felt just as solid as the new one that I had purchased a few years prior. And it looked like it hadn't been shot a lot either. You can look at like the feed ramp wear on it. You can look at the wear and tear on the slide and the and the uh, you know all the internal components and stuff. It make a make a pretty good choice. But there, I mean, but then again, you, especially with revolvers, you need to know what you're looking for, too. If you're going to buy you, used, you know, check the timing. and yeah. If the shop doesn't let you take it apart to look at the parts, it wouldn't be a shop I would trust. I agree. I would want to see the internals, make sure it doesn't have a broken guide rod spring, or make sure that it doesn't have, that it's not just totally muck full of crap. I mean, it could have been something that fell into a swamp, and then somebody, <laughs> it could be full of rust. See, I mean, that's you don't not know. different. Yeah. Where I go to pawn shops, I try to find the ones that are dirty and roughest and then try to haggle them down as best I can to get a <laughs> decent price on it. Well, that's true. And if you're fine tinkering with it, if you don't mind the possibility of having to replace a few parts or get a few things for it, if you just always had good luck, yeah, sure, man. No problems there. Yeah. So that's not a bad one. All right. Any other suggestions, guys? I'm seeing if there's anything else popping up in the chat before we move on. You know, and if Gunsnob ever needs help, I'm sure his son, Seven Wonders, can help him out. There you um, go. There you go. SS Pond says that anything 40 caliber is cheap right now. Oh, man, I'm seeing police trade in. Um, you can get police trade in 40 cal six hours. If you just type in um, police trade in pistols or handguns and look them up for sale, you can get them for, for $399. So a couple for, for a little $349. Glocks, I mean, you can get your, what, a Glock 22s? In 40 for, for 299 sometimes even less for a Gen 3. So, yeah, 40, 40 everything is just dirt cheap right now. M&Ps for $300. For the ammo. Yeah, you're looking at $15 for a box of 50. But I'm just saying if somebody wants to buy something just to get set up, a one-time investment of a box of 50 rounds for $15. Or if you want to get defensive, a buck a round. You know, for some critical defense, you're looking at $20 for a box of 25 or 25 bucks you've spent 50 bucks on ammo and then you're set you know you can at least That's defend yourself I'm, uh, looking yeah for loading my own 40 ammo oh there you go there you go yeah that is oh yeah yeah that's a big investment you know, big upfront investment and you'd have to load thousands of rounds before you break even 
because of how much it costs to get the equipment and then how the pennies that you save. Uh, true, true. Around. But if you if you want to run, say, some potent hollow points or some self defense rounds, it's gonna be way cheaper to load it yourself versus paying a buck around when you buy it. Well, critical offense true. or critical duty, you know. Some people would disagree with me on this, but that's where mm -hmm. uh when it comes to defensive rounds, make the decision based on your state and what your local area is like. I personally would not carry defensive ammo that I hand rolled uh, being here in California. Okay, okay. Being that there are so many you know, anti gunners here, I would you know I would choose a off the shelf factory uh, defensive ammo just to give them one less thing to potentially come back at me for if I ever had to use it. Yeah. No, well, that's a possible because you don't know what kind of character digging they're going to do on you or yeah, what you're running in the gun or how the gun's been modified. Yeah, I know we've Texas, had Oklahoma, Nebraska, places like that where they're a little more friendly. I would be less concerned about well, carrying hand load defensives. It's interesting you would say that because we had a case and I am killing myself for not being able to find this. This was in our, our, our state newspaper, the Lincoln Journal Star. There was a guy that went after another his ex-girlfriend's boyfriend, and he had critical defense in his handgun, and he shot this guy outside of a bowling alley, got arrested, and they wanted to press him with even additional additional charges because he used the self-defense ammo on this guy. They said he had intention to do even more bodily harm than the murder charges or whatever they were putting, the assault charges they were throwing on him. So they they wanted to, I don't know if anything ever came of that, but they had mentioned in the that he had this malicious intent because he was using a more potent round. And not that it's enough to just shoot somebody, but the fact that you want to use an enhanced round essentially to kill somebody it showed that he had wanted to do even more harm. I mean, that I guess that could affect your sentencing. That could get you a maximum because of what you're doing to another human being. It's not like it was a necessarily like a struggle or a fight, you know, like like necessarily even a crime of passion. This was something he planned to do. So it made him look really bad when he got arrested that he was going to do that. So I mean, I would have no qualms with carrying defensive ammo for a self defense situation. You know, I'm fine with that. But like you said, factory loads. You know, nothing, nothing, nothing out of the ordinary, nothing that any other person wouldn't carry um, as something you might worry about. But I mean, again, you buy those rounds so that you don't have to use excessive force to stop somebody. One or two rounds, you might be able to stop your assailant if you're using a good defensive round versus a full metal jacket that could just potentially whiz right through and not stop the attacker, you know. So, yeah, you, you uh, know, make your choices, you know, yeah. based on your own needs as well as the environment in which you're going to be, you know, uh, living. Yep. Yep. Sam, Sam of Anarchy says you can't go wrong with federal ammo. Yeah. Federal Hydroshock, uh, spear gold dots, Hornady critical defense. I, I yeah, I mean, I agree. Quality, I agree. You know, any of the good quality bonded, uh, hollow points will get the job done. Yep. Hey, Travis, I'm going to jump out. So hey, everybody no problem. have a great, every second matters. Get out there and good. do something. Play definitely, definitely. Definitely. Get yeah, active thanks, because thanks for the uh, invite. I appreciate no problem, it. man. Thank you. Thank you so much, dude. All right. You know, Travis, I, I got to thinking about that whole, you know, more malicious intent because of the uh, the type or quality of ammunition. That's I what think the prosecution that it, wanted to throw down on him. I don't know if they did or not, but if if, it, if the prosecution actually did that and the defense attorney didn't get that taken thrown out, then he's a real bad attorney because it'd be like this, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Should we write a more expensive speeding ticket for the guy who gets pulled over doing 10 over in a Corvette versus the guy who gets pulled over doing 10 over in a pickup Semi. car? Because <laughs> yeah. he had intent, he had intent to speed because he bought a faster car. No, 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 no. You're doing that wrong. You're talking about 87 octane versus 91 octane. Oh, there, there you go. go. No, 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 no. Because the because Corvette would be like a high point in a... Glock, <laughs> no, I'm not talking about the the gun. I'm just talking about if you're going to, to do get, damage, why, right? Why, if if you're going to charge him an additional charge because he had better quality ammunition or he had a self defense ammunition versus just the fact that he was trying to kill somebody, like what Travis is saying, then you're going to have to, in by the same logic, you should write a more expensive speeding ticket for the guy in the sports car than the guy in the subcompact. Because of the potential, the potential to do more harm because of the velocity, because of the the power, because of yeah, yeah, it's crazy, man. It's crazy. That speeding ticket because he bought that fast car. 
So Patrick Pew Pew has a good point on the YouTube side. So they're cool with using ball rounds over penetrating and killing a bystander. Yeah, that's why I would think that you would want to use the hollow points, definitely. If any, not not to hurt another person intentionally, but out of self-defense, you want something that's going to expel the energy inside your assailant to neutralize them as quickly as possible. Um, what do we got going on here? Fiat 500. Cops never expect the Fiat 500 doing a buck 20 on the freeway, Sean says. <laughs> Sean, how would you know about that? How would you know about Can a Fiat 500 even do 120 miles an hour? Yeah, if you, if you strap a Jado bottle to the top, <laughs> it will. <laughs> you run a NOS, Sean, you run a NOS. Save the, save the spray for the return trip, Sean. So... <laughs> <laughs> that was from that was from too fast too furious but uh all right so let's move on to the last little topic here that we have for today and then we'll, we got a reloading question so glock 43 now before you guys say why would you ever do this why would you ever buy this why would you go single stack nine blah 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 that's not the point so we want to have a debate glock 43 versus a 1911 pattern pistol chambered in nine millimeter which one would you guys buy and why which one is the better gun for carry should you go with the Glock 43 or would you go with a 1911 chambered in 9mm? And it doesn't matter if you want to go expensive 1911, cheap 9, 1911 like a Star BM, or you want to go higher end, Nighthawk, whatever. I don't care. What would you guys do? Uh, Apparently uh, somebody has a conundrum that they're dealing with because they want our help. So we need to help them. It's our responsibility. Well, if they're coming here for help, then I'm sorry, but they are looking in the wrong places. We, this is uh, the premier channel for Pete Keyboard Commandos, okay? The premier I mean, I have toys on top of my gun safe. You can trust me, all right? <laughs> I, have a little, I have a little Makarov right there. I've got, uh, you know, a fidget spinner have, right there. What's at that? least you don't have uh, comic books, you know, uh, framed on the wall behind oh, you. Oh, they're upstairs in the boxes. They're they're triple bagged and acid-free bags with backing so they don't get bent. So there I'll put go. some of those out. I'll, now that I'm just copying Matt blatantly as if I'm not copying enough anyway. So what do you guys <laughs> think? G43, which is what? A plus one? Is it A plus one or seven plus one? Six plus one. Six plus one. Okay, but you could run a plus two extension. And then any other 1911 chamber to nine millimeter, let's just go single stack, which would usually be seven or eight plus one. What would you guys go with if you're let's say 550 bucks brand new? You're gonna you got 550 to spend 600 dollars. Now let's not even a put a price gun on. or a like, yeah as a carry gun as a carry gun. Which one would you guys buy? Glock 43 all day. Never shot a Glock, so I wouldn't know. I don't know. I mean, you might like the the heft and maybe the. I guess it depends which one maybe you shoot better. The G43, in my opinion, is a difficult gun to shoot accurately. I really had to practice with it a lot to really shoot it well. Um, not that you shouldn't practice a lot with your gun, but I guess maybe somebody likes that 1911 look. They like something kind of classy looking, looks kind of nice. But then again, you're thinking of a defensive tool. Uh, so you want simplicity and ease of use. The G43 would be the way to go. <sighs> we should almost open this one up to the chat. <laughs> I don't like the grip angle of the clock at all. But is it similar to a 1911, though? Kind of an upright yeah. angle? Is it? Is it? No, it's more of a, more of a tilt, isn't it? More of an angle than... Yeah. Wow. I don't know. I don't know what I would say, guys. Uh, now, here's a good suggestion. The Mossberg MC1 over the G43. There you go. Isn't a Glock 43 the same size as a Glock 26? I believe so, Sam. I think it's just the single stack version of the G26, and I could be wrong. I mean, I see no point buying a 9mm 1911 Sui. That's not the point. Somebody wants well, to know which one would you go with. So, Do you want a uh, single action external hammer or a double action striker fired? I guess mm -hmm. that's comes down to because if you're both looking at nine millimeter single stack it really comes down to that and that's where if you know the you know 1911 would be carried at least in to my understanding based on the general 1911s i know about would be carried cocked and locked so if you're comfortable carrying that then you can get it if you're not then go with clock i mean that's your because i've never fired either one of these uh so SS Pond, yeah, SS Pond is saying just out there shooting. I like the 1911 9mm, no recoil, less recoil. Yeah, they're like the, shooting a 22. Yeah, so, you're gonna wow. get a lot more heft, about, a lot more weight. It's gonna be a smoother, maybe smoother follow up shots. Think about yeah, from a self defense standpoint. All metal 1911, you know, you know 1911 well, and 9mm. You could go, go a fairly hefty gun, yeah, in a not a you know, not a hot rod cartridge. Not that it's underpowered, but it's not hot rod either. Uh, but you could so go with a commander style too. That's going to be more in line with the size of a G forty three, shorter barrel, stubbier frame. I mean, there's so many variants of nineteen elevens you can get that are chambered in nine millimeter. I'm going to get little pocket ones if you want to. Um, I don't know. I guess I, I love and I love the looks of the nineteen eleven. You're going to be looking at almost the same capacity. 
But if you want to think of just idiot proof, I guess the Glock would be the way to go. Well, you make something idiot proof, someone will make a better idiot. No, yeah, this is true. This is, I'm, what I, I'm just thinking less mechanical interference, less possibility for failure or whatnot. But yeah. right, that's for the simple. Um, I believe that's for, from what I know of them. The, you know, the Glock would be a simple or uh, manual of arms. You know, in a defensive situation, you're not having to worry about dropping safeties and all this other stuff. You, yeah. You know, yeah. Like, you draw and squeeze. Yeah. Not that dissimilar from a revolver in that way. Yeah, and there's a lot of people that don't like a safety on their carry weapon. I understand that. That's how. That's one of the reasons why I bought my car CT9 was because it was it, it would fire without the magazine. It had it had no no safeties on it except for just uh, a striker safety. I mean, it didn't even have a blade on the trigger. I mean, you kept it holstered unless you needed to draw it. Um, that's how. That's kind of my philosophy: is less interference, less less issues. Not that you couldn't train with a gun that has a safety and get good with it. I mean, God knows that enough GIs carried 1911s that they knew what they were doing. Um, Man, I don't know. This is there's other suggestions popping out there. Car CM9, CZ75. I know they make a compact version of that. You could go with the 43X if you wanted, you know, something a little bit slimmer. 43 just because of the weight. Yeah, that'd be another part of it too. Is you could be 43 would be a lighter would be a lighter gun, like you said, Calaveras. Especially if you're gonna go full size frame, you know, 1911. I I gotta push for the. I would just go with the Glock. I I don't know. I would go with the Glock just because of ease of use, simplicity, weight. Just personally, that's just me. I mean, I don't. Yeah, like Patrick Glocks will shoot underwater and go through uh, metal detectors and everything else, right? Yeah, they're porcelain. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Tony, what you said you'd a go Glock, with the nineteen eleven. Will shoot underwater. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it will. That's real. Yeah, no, they'll 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 go off. Yeah, I've yeah yeah that's it's been tested. Oh, I've seen videos. That's on where stuff. won't most firearms you know discharge underwater? I mean, yeah. I don't know how well they'll cycle the action, go to the next round. But at least the one that's chambered. The first round will go out. Yeah, so many, so many feet. Out. Yeah, yeah. Tony, yeah. are you the Tony? Are you the lone vote for the the nineteen eleven? I I don't know. I, I do they have changeable back straps on the newer Glocks? The ooh, that's a good question. I don't, does the forty three X have a interchangeable back strap on it? I don't think the forty three do. Uh, the 43 X's or forty threes? I don't even know if the Gen four forty threes. I don't think so. The forty three is weird. Doesn't. Because, yeah, the 43s are kind of their own like little sideline of production. They're almost like a 42 frame, but you you yeah. get the the newer slide. You know, I don't know. I yeah. If, if not that, then I would carry. I would go to 1911 just for comfort of handling. Yeah, you might get a more full size grip, even though it's a single stack. You've got you can you can your choice of grips. You could put whatever kind of texture on there that you want. Um, what do we have here? We've got Sam of Anarchy says that's why the SEALs use Glocks among many of the other guns, I'm sure, so they can fire underwater potentially or be they'll fire at least once underwater, but they usually don't cycle. Scott P79 says so. Yeah, the mech um, thing, you want you want something that looks like a 1911 in 9 millimeter. Look at the star model B or BM. Yep, yep. That'd uh, be for 180 bucks. Yeah, yeah. And that's for as long as you don't need replacement parts, I don't know because that's where those are out of production, right? I don't know. Oh no, you can. There's parts out there. There are there are places oh, that sell okay. just it springs and sears and this and that. the The problem with those is when you buy it, you don't know what you're going to get. And I want one of those BMs so bad, but then I'll again I make the mistake of reading the reviews. And there's people that get them and they look like they've been put through a chipper shredder. And there's other people that get them and they're immaculate. And there's people that pay an extra forty bucks for hand select from Classic and they get garbage. So I can't. If I bought a BM, I'd have to do it in person. I'd have to see it. Check down the chamber, look it over. I would not want to get one that's all pitted and rusted and beat up. I don't feel like re if you could buy one, well, that goes refinishing back to, it. That goes back to our under five hundred dollar used gun comment yeah. about you know uh, being able to look it over and being able to know what you're looking at. Yeah, that's where if it's um, sight unseen, then a used gun sight unseen is a little uneasy for me. Now, my another suggestion I have: if you want a single stack nine, but you want a safety, maybe that's the reason why you want the 1911. Uh, you just get yourself a Taurus G2S, which is the single stack model, which is a six or seven plus one, or the, again that Mossberg MC1, uh, MC9, whatever. Uh, you go that route too if you want to. So, yeah, I don't know. I would my, I mean my my push would be for the Glock personally, just for easy use. But that's just me. But then again, the 43 was a difficult gun, one of the one of the most difficult guns for me to shoot accurately with at the range. And I put a couple hundred rounds through before I finally felt comfortable enough to draw and shoot, especially at any kind of a distance going beyond say 12, you know, maybe 12 yards or so. After that, it was really hard for me to to fire it well. So, um, yeah, that's right. true. The only you know the two pistols I have any significant experience with is my Shield 40. 
and my SIG 238, you know, a 380, uh, but. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, littler guns can be can be a little more difficult to keep on target, especially once you get out there at any kind of a distance. So, <laughs> yeah, that's for the farthest sure. I think I've shot either of those is about forty five yards, and I was hitting and not every shot, but I was I was probably keeping it in probably a two foot circle at that distance. Yeah, yeah. Frank Hellman says I'm out there showing the G2C. I'll tell you something, Frank. My family, between myself, my stepdad, and one of my cousins, we're 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 bouncing between six or seven PT111 G2s that we've owned, bought, and sold. We seem to buy them and sell them and buy them again. Never had a problem with them ever. I'm not kidding. I've fired mine enough on camera. I've even modified mine enough. I, I have since sold my PT111 G2, and I did use it to buy a new carry gun. But uh, I. They're fine. I mean, some people complain about having guide rod problems after a thousand rounds, but a lot of guys upgrade to the stainless steel guide rods and spring combos on those G2Cs. And remember, if you do buy a G2C, you only get a one-year warranty as of January of 2017, if I'm not mistaken. So that's something to consider, too. That's so. true. Do all the Glocks have a captured guide rod spring? That's for yeah. Okay, that's mm -hmm. perfect. And so do, so do the G2Cs. The problem with the G2Cs that they were having is the coils would skip off the back of the cap of the rod and, and lock mm -hmm. the slide back or lock it forward and you couldn't cycle it. Right. And so, and, or, or they would break. Or they, I've had a people, few people chime in and say that their, their, their factory tours guide rods had broken around the 800 to 1,000 round um, point in the guns. Now, I don't know how many rounds my family's put through their PT-111s. We still have three or four of them between two family members. They keep them as truck guns and home guns. Because we bought them, they were buying them. When we were buying them, they were one hundred seventy nine dollars locally. Uh, they were selling them at a gun store at Lincoln. What's that? The reason I was asking, Travis, is I know the shield has the captured rod. Going back to what I know, mm -hmm. and that's your, and which is a lot easier to disassemble and clean and work with, you know, in my mind, than like the Sig I have, which is a baby nineteen eleven design, where it's not a captured, you know. Uh, and that's where, when you're disassembling it and trying to make sure that spring doesn't shoot across the room and disappear yeah. in ether. Oh, yeah. Uh, Sui778 says it's January of 2018, not January of 2017. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. It's January after January of 2018, your Taurus is made after that point. Doesn't matter when you buy them, but manufactured after that point or one-year warranty. I think by that point in January 2018 is when the G2C started coming out, so... Um, is there such a thing as an aluminum frame Glock? Tony, I'm sure there's somebody that makes a frame made out of metal, like a CNC machine framed for the Glock. I'm, I mean, if you look at how people there's modify a company their Glocks, that makes those. yeah, you can, you could get, is it Zev? Does Zev make a metal frame? I don't know who it is. I mean, you can, man, you can do whatever you could basically, all you have left over is like the trigger and the serial number and everything else is completely modified. Even that's been changed. So, I mean, you can take those Glocks to the point that they've been so, uh, modified. Um, yeah, there's actually one of the American-made companies. I think it was on either Clover or Ghost Show. They're looking at that's where the uh, the serialized part was actually a like a metal lattice that actually inserted into the grip, you know, and actually mm -hmm. the uh, the polymer was actually cut out, so you can see the serial number on it. Yeah, that's right. Your, your P320s and P250s. Yeah, that and ladder stuff. was the only part that was actually serialized. You could mm -hmm. completely swap out from a Single stack to a double stack, if I remember correctly, from a short grip to a long grip, like five mm -hmm. different slide lengths. You know, depending oh, yeah. on what design you go with, which brand, and depending on what the serialized part is, yeah, you can, you know, uh, if you want to go through the time, money, and, you know, uh, everything else, you can do some serious modifications with some of these. Those uh, Steyr 9 millimeters that I remember watching an interview that one of our gun channels people did with Steyr, the, the Steyr 9 millimeter was the first gun, if I'm not mistaken, that has the modular chassis where you could take the trigger pack out and put it in another frame if you wanted to, even before SIG did the P320 with that kind of a swappability. So, I mean, yeah, it's been around for a little while, but it is cool that you have that option to go with the larger frame, smaller frame. I think you can do that. David, you can quote me on this or correct me if I'm wrong. The Breda APX does that too. You can swap out the internals for like a OD green frame if you want. And I think you can go with the different frames, right? Yeah, the Beretta APX, the... I guess it's the fire control group is what they call it, is what the actual gun is. And uh, the SIG P320 is the same way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Patrick Pupi has a quick question for me. He goes, when are you going to do the review of the Taurus uh, TX-22? As much as I want one, Patrick, when I went to go buy one, they were all sold out. And then I have a little bit of a shift in the channel, Patrick. I'm doing more reloading stuff. I'm going. I'm investing in reloading stuff now instead of buying guns. I've got that all set up, basically. So I will go back and pick up a TX-22 at some point. They're around $349, but I did just buy a new 
uh, air or pistol lower because I want to go with a shorter uh, truck gun. So that's kind of what I'm doing. I'll get my hands on a TX-22 at some point or another. They're cool. I mean, they're really they're really neat pistols, man. They're like a 16 plus one, 22 LR. They look like a nice design. They look solid. A lot of channels have come out. I haven't seen a lot of complaints about them. Some of the people that have put a lot of rounds through them, they have maybe maybe one issue, maybe one failure to feed or one FTE out of you know hundreds of rounds. So they seem to be good, but uh, I have not tried one yet, but I'd like to get my hands on a TX-22. So, um, Okay, so the last thing I have for you guys here is I have a viewer that uh, reached out to me. I'm just going to go ahead and do a screen share. And, and Tony, you can help us with this in Squib. Um, his comment was that maybe he had positioned the resizing die too far or too close or whatever. Here's the deal. Or Squib, do you want to explain the problem while I bring this up on a screen share? So he, he's he got a the, – the case mouth is too narrow according to the reload manual. And we weren't exactly sure what was going on. He's, he's reloading 6.5 Creedmoor, and the case mouth needs to be 2.95. And he's Maybe. getting 2.90. Now, 6.5 Grendel is 2.90. So okay, we at go. first we thought it, he might have he had Grendel dies by mistake or they might have mispackaged it at the factory. But he's, he's saying, no, there's 6.5 Creedmoor dies. They so, are. Yeah, I got a picture of the die right here. It does say 6.5. He bought the uh, Lee Ultimate reloading dies. And so he's got a full-length sizer, 6.5 Creedmoor. It's got to see there. And somehow, some way, his the, the the mouth opening on the on the the brass is 0 0.290. He needs 0 0.295. We don't understand why. And he needs at least. I mean, inside the bullet is a 0 0.260. He's getting 0.258. So he's not going to be able to see the bullet in there. So we don't understand. Is it the incorrect die that he got from Lee? Is that a possibility? How could you have it neck down more than is necessary if you're using the correct die, a full size, a full length sizing die? Well, if he's flaring the mouth of the case, it should see the bullet. That's yeah. not that much. See, I was thinking, though, that with that, that bottleneck, it's just going to re reform it, not really flare it so much like a like a straight wall. I mean, I've got a flare to reload 44 Magnum and 44 Special, but I don't have to, to flare to reload like 223. I don't flare to reload uh, 762 by 25 Tokarev either. Well, now here's here's the deal. In his manual, he, you know, it's showing you need uh, two nine five at the mouth, at the neck, or whatever to to properly seat the bullet. He doesn't have point two nine five on the outsides. He's got point two nine zero, so he's not even going to be able to to seat around. I mean, if it's two one hundreds off, isn't that going to make it impossible for him to seat the bullet properly without crushing the brass? Yeah, I think that's got to be a die issue. I would contact Lee and get a new. So, so viewer, if you're watching this, and I'm keeping your identity private here because I didn't, I didn't want to mention you, but um, yeah, I that's the Lee, die right there. So Lee has the technical support contact us section on their website, and um, yeah. if you if you get a hold of them, I mean, I I haven't had to use it before, but I know where it's at. Uh, um, if you get a hold of them, be kind of interesting to see the the explanation. I mean. If you've if you've adjusted it and adjusted it and and it, you're not getting any different result by by making proper adjustments based on the instructions, then yeah, at this point the only thing I can think of is is they they might have mispacked something. I mean, I could be barking up the wrong tree completely. I mean, I'm not right there, and we're just going off of even though you've included pictures and stuff like that. Um, you know, this is one of those with reloading. Sometimes you're better off being there. Um, it's kind of yeah. like when you're talking to a mechanic and you go, well, my car's making this noise. Well, bring the car in. Let me take a look at it. Well, I can't really bring it in, but it's making this noise. So what do I do? So <laughs> this is one of those. And that's not to say we give out reloading advice based off of experience, but we're talking about our equipment on our bench with our loads. We're not necessarily talking about somebody else's. So um, I have not reloaded 6.5 Creedmoor. Uh, so... I'm not aware of any issues with that particular caliber because certain calibers might have some little quirks. Uh, Clover and I were talking about that one day about how once you dive into the rabbit hole of reloading that you start finding little quirks with certain calibers or, or things like that. That's nothing to to uh, put somebody off from wanting to get into reloading. As you go along, you'll you'll encounter this stuff or you'll learn about something specific to whatever you're trying to reload. So don't don't let that 
keep you from trying to get into it. Overall, it's fairly simple. Guitar okay. Man Pete is saying expander ball. Can you guys help me out on that with the expander okay. ball? Yeah. So that, yeah. that that's on that decapping those decapping pins that I sent uh -huh. you the spare parts. That yeah. that that uh, bowling pin shaped bulge. That's kind of the the expander. If yeah. you look at the Lee part number, it's a Lee expander. So. Yeah, yeah, that's for it. That's you know, what essentially it does for your rifle what the uh, the flare die does for a pistol. So that way it opens the neck up ever so right. slightly. So the round can be seated. And then yeah, that's you, why and I'm wondering if he's getting the dimensions for a 6.5 Grendel, could they have put the 6.5 Grendel one in there by mistake at the factory? That's a long shot, but. Well, one thing I will say about Lee is they are super. I broke a, I broke a piece on my progressive press and called them. And they're like, oh, no problem. And I was like, well, I'll buy it. And they're like, no, 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 we'll send it to you. No problem. And didn't even ask any questions, didn't want to see it, nothing. I just told them what I broke. And they sent me like a whole, the whole, it was a powder charging setup. And they sent me basically the whole thing minus the uh, hopper. And all yeah, I needed was one little piece. They were super oh. customer service. I've heard good things about Lee customer service. And I've heard your good things about RCBS customer service. I'm not sure about. Reading or any of the other companies, but I know those two are supposed to be pretty good. Yeah, we don't just for information for the viewers, we don't know if he's tried to actually load any rounds yet. He was afraid to because he didn't want to ruin the brass and he didn't know if it'd be safe. Guitar Man P says, Guide the bullet into the die and seat that sucker in anyway at five thousands. You know, I don't know. I, I, I'm i like I said, I'm still a newbie to reloading, so I really can't make a comment on it. Um, Midnight Range says maybe the right die with the wrong pin. That's what I'm guessing. He needs to contact him and ask him and let them know what's happening with it. And then I'd just contact them. They would help. They're super helpful. And he's using once fired brass. We know it is six five Creedmoor brass, and he knows exactly. He knows what he's. I mean, he's doing. He asked me if I was going to get into doing six five Creedmoor, and I said yes because he's got six five also that he wants to reload. So that's why. That's why we were talking about that. But yeah, do give him a call, at customer service. At this point, I would say don't, don't load it. I mean, there's a few people chiming in saying you can do it, but I don't want to see anybody have any problems with their gun or have any issues or you know you do it properly. Help. So. Travis, you've got a 6.5 uh, decapping pin with that expander ball. I just thought about this. I, I don't know. I, I guess I was just really tired last night when we were talking about this. Um, I I wasn't thinking. You could you could, you could, could yeah. take calipers to yours and uh, then tell him to take his out, take calipers to his, and take take readings and make sure that, you know, if his diameter uh, is different than yours and he's got the wrong part in there. What should it be? It should be the the point two six zero or point two nine five or what? Well, point uh, two nine five was the outside diameter, so the inside's got to be point two six four or maybe just a hair more. Okay, give me guys, give me ten seconds, and I'll grab my stuff real quick. Okay, hold on. All right, you're on the clock, Travis. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I sent him some some spare parts, and one of them was uh, the six five Creedmoor uh, decapping pin with the expander ball built into it that is for the Lee die. So maybe we can try to backwards engineer this. I don't know. Um, Travis and I were, were, uh, were actually on the phone last night going over this and, and looking at the pictures and, and trying to, to sort it out. So yeah, um, I think that would probably be a good place to start. And, you know, uh, you know, I uh, use the caliper or micrometer that's on his and then on Travis's. Travis, you're muted. Uh, <laughs> I just cursed. <laughs> it was muted. You know, I got to keep a G. All right, so uh, here we go. So what do I do? Walk me through this, guys. What okay. Do I need to, yeah. The the widest part on that should be the widest uh, for the the. To Point two six zero. Is that what you're getting? Let me let me look. Let me lock this. Up. No, no, I have not measured it yet. Is this you want me to? Okay, we're talking the widest part in the bulge right here. Or yeah, back yes. or what? Right here? Why well, yeah, right right there. Yeah. What do you get? Right, so let me use zero. Okay. Uh, we want inches, right? Yes, sir. Hold on a second. All right. So, widest part, we are looking at right there 0.263. Okay. So that's what he should be getting okay. then, because that's the part that should be in that, that die. That's a Lee pin yeah. for that caliber. So that, that should be it. Point point two six point two six three. Yeah. So I would yeah. say take that out of the take that out of the die and take your calipers to it. If you're getting point two six three, then it's something else. If you're not, then yeah, yeah point two six three. I, I just did it a second time. So there you go. Yeah, and that's true. And I would definitely suggest to him 
call, you know, yeah. you know, get his number compared to yours and call in to yeah. Lee with both of those numbers. So that way, when you're talking to the customer service, you have more information as to, you know, what uh, I'm getting this, my buddy's getting that. Maybe you know what? Uh, maybe you can help me walk through this type thing. Is uh, yeah. just calling in, you know, kind of like talk, going into the you know auto dealership. Oh, I'm having an issue. Well, yeah. what you know? Give me inf- you know. Tell me what you know, what are you doing? You know, like my Jeep is currently having a gauge cluster issue. That's where, but if I would have just taken it in, you know, okay, well, I was able when I called in to schedule the appointment, uh, like if I would have just, okay, my gauge cluster is having an issue. If I, that's all I've been able to tell them, they would have had no, no, nothing to even, you know, base anything off of. But in fact, I was able to tell them this is what it's doing. Mm-hmm. It, you know, the tech was able to start, you know, okay, well, just as a heads up, it was it could be a list of two or three different things. Then we'll have to see it, not we'll test it to be sure. But that's where, based on what I was telling him, he was able to get a at least a, the beginning of information on it, so he could start to think about it. So, I'm thinking that the first thing they might say is, "Did you? Are you sure you adjusted uh, the the die properly according to the instructions?" And after that, I'm not really too sure. Now, I've been on the Lee website. I I couldn't find a, a phone number for them. I'm sure they've got one, but they do have one where you can email in a question and they'll email back. Um, if there is a phone number, maybe it's on the uh, instructions. Uh, my dies are buried. Uh, or, or, you know, you might be able to Google it and find it, but I, I didn't find in their contact us section on their Lee precision website. I, it's more or less like a send your question in kind of a thing. So uh, uh, I think I found it on their, uh, on the book that came with the press and stuff. Uh, all right. Uh, Midnight Range says I've smashed down cases with full length sizing because my dies were set low. Maybe his die said uh, a little bit too low and it's closing the mouth, but the ball should fix that on the way out. Mm-hmm. Guitar Man P says the case has to be smaller than the bullet until you see the bullet. Right, that's well. I try seeing a bullet in an empty case. Okay, that's what it does? Yeah, that's that's okay. I'll give him that suggestion, and then also measure the diameter and just make sure you've got the right pin. I mean, it could be a possibility that he's got the wrong or the wrong pin, or it's just set too high or too low or whatnot. So I think you're supposed to set it so that the um, was like a third of a turn more than the die once you raise your press up all the way, so it just comes in contact like here's i got this one set up for nine millimeter this isn't mounted yet so i have it set so that once it comes down right here let's lock this on me real quick it's just like a third of a turn more once it comes in contact with the uh the pin or with the the die itself so yeah so i don't know i mean i guess you can you might want to just check the depth you know but i would definitely check the pin too because that could be causing the issue yeah and like the neck was showing 0.290 and it was it was 0.24 Five, what was it? Point two five something on the inside of the inside of the neck. So, I mean, Tony says, I know one question I didn't ask was, uh, did he just did he try to run one to try to see the bullet? Yeah, did it fall through? Did it crush the case? Did it, or has he, or did it, I mean? Because here's the thing: I typically don't check the neck diameter. The only time I've been uh, uh, checking the neck di- diameters, Tony, after you and I talked about my issues with the 762 by 25 Tokarev, um, other other than that, I mean, I, I mean, I, I have never checked it, so I don't know why he would stop the process and check unless he did run into a problem where the first one he crushed it. That's what um, I was wondering because I've never checked it. Anytime I ever reloaded, I always just went with it if it fit. Tony says the 6.5 Grendel neck shows 0. .290, so maybe Lee made a mistake and put a 6.5 Grendel pin in there. And that's what so. you and I were talking about last yep. night, going through our yep. reload manuals. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right, where, so we got uh, that. And, I mean, that kind of stuff can really affect it. And that's when if it's supposed to flare out more than trying to seat, it could definitely damage press, yeah. it could damage the dies, it could damage the rounds. Uh, my girlfriend's dad, you know, it was just a mistake on his part. It wasn't on the machine uh, equipment. That's where he didn't flare the neck of a uh, 45 ACP quite enough. He, as he went to seat the round, the uh, casing actually shaved and off some of the uh, copper jacket off one of the slugs, and you know, uh, you know, smashed it, you know, almost accordion style up towards the front and got stuck in the uh die in the die and he had to get it out of there 
Everybody so well, that that one 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 one. How important is it to inspect your projectiles? Like when you buy a bulk back, back a box of projectiles that you're going to reload with, do you need to inspect each and every one to make sure they're not damaged, nope. or they usually come in pretty foolproof? I've never checked the bullets ever to to see if they were. I mean, I I did, I did for fun on the Hornet days, and they were. Uh, a That's th- true. Like a micro thousand seven inch difference between them, and that could just be the caliper itself. That's so, true. Uh, like cracks and and other types of damage and stuff like that. It depends on what you're using it for. That's for if you're looking at a long range precision target round, then yeah, weighing out every slug, inspecting every slug might be you know necessary. If you're you looking at those rounds, sorry, Tony. You're gonna be buying those for precision bulk. Yeah, that's just it. No, I mean, I'm if you're talking, doing, if you're doing about... this ultra super, you know, Olympic class shooting, blah blah blah. Yeah, but I mean, otherwise, no. There, I've I've never heard of anybody having an issue. Now, I mean, they do have factory seconds that they sell. Those are just blemished. There's nothing wrong with them dimensionally, and I suppose you could get a bad lot. But uh, I would think that they would put out a recall notice every now and then in the back of the American Rifleman magazine. You'll see a recall notice on this Saturday other, yeah. but I don't remember any being on on reloading components. Yeah, on my yeah. 32 Winchester Special slugs that I got, they're uh, Spear Hot Core. I've noticed that's because I load on single stage press. I've noticed before as I'm pulling the rounds, you know, slugs out getting ready to see it, the. Uh, the soft points on a few of them have been like they got stuck in, you know, a piece of machinery in this room and they were, you know, like half cut off. The tip was a half cut off or shoved away to one side with a flattened edge on it or something. Uh, I mean, that's just a 20 inch uh, lever action carbine rifle. It's not a precision rifle. So I was just like, oh, okay. Well, I noticed it because I was picking up individual slugs. But I just loaded it up anyhow and shot them, and they shot just fine. But yeah, yeah. for most applications, I don't think you really need to pay that close of attention to the slugs. Oh, yeah. Well, guys, we have uh, one last question from the chat before, before we go ahead and shut it down. Uh, what are your thoughts on the uh, the Beretta 93R? Let me do a little screen share if you're not familiar with it. The uh, 93R is what the burst or full automatic version of the 92 series Berettas. Thoughts, feelings? This is a question from the chat on the YouTube side. What do you guys think? If I had the money, I would definitely love to play with one. Love and Call of Duty. <laughs> That's about as close as I get. Yeah, you can keep it. You can keep it? <laughs> Come on, aren't you a Beretta guy there, Kingpin? I like oh, I like Berettas, but that looks that looks stunningly like a pellet gun that I own. Oh, this is no, quite it's a, a pellet it's gun, a, it's man. A 92, it's a 92 yeah. with a folding forward grip that you can uh-huh. take off or fold up, yep. and it's got a compensated barrel. <laughs> Yep. And they have a uh, extended magazine for was it a thirty three round mag or something, which would be kind of awkward. The thing is with with this, you have a selected fire, so you can use it as a semi auto. Yeah, I would use the burst feature to get away, kind of like the shotgun on the Lamat when you're when you're uh, outnumbered and you're just trying to get to a better position. You might just want something that's going to make everybody scatter just so you can get away, kind of like. Uh, Kind of like, uh, was, who's the, I, I want to say it's Batman, but it's not Batman. Who's the superhero or super villain that throws down the smoke bomb to get away? You know? Yeah. Yeah. That it, kind it's of the same sort of effect. So if you, if you're <clears throat> spraying bullets out of this thing fast, everybody's going to be running for cover. And at that point you can, you can turn tail and run. It's the same thing with the shotgun barrel on the Lamat. That's not an offensive, um, type uh arrangement on that you when you're out of ammo and you got to go down to the grape shot that's to make everybody scatter so you can get away they say that the 93r is considered difficult to control when being repeatedly fired in burst mode because of the 100 uh 1100 round per minute firing rate yeah i I wouldn't (laughs) expect it to be for acting that's why i'm saying you you put it in burst when you're just outnumbered they're just coming and you're outnumbered and and this is a type of weapon that you would have if you're like on a security detail the, you know, and you're trying to get your your your, mm-hmm. your person out of there safely. This isn't really like your EDC kind of gun. No, it was. Yeah, it says it was designed to be used by Italian Italian counter tower terrorism forces in Italy, uh, also adopted by other police and military forces. It was made from 1979 till 1993. 15 or 20 round box magazines. Yeah, like I said, it'd be fun to play with, but it wouldn't be something I would. You know, I'm 
I wouldn't yeah. even buy it. It would be if I was at the range, had the extra money for ammo, and somebody had it, I would like, yeah, I'll put a magazine through it just to say I've shot one. But if I was going to have you know uh, a full auto nine millimeter, I'd much rather have an MP5. Robocop's pistol was based on the ninety three R two, so that gives it automatic street cred. <laughs> John, so. John Travolta had one in Broken Arrow. Hey, there we go. Yeah, they mentioned some of the movies that you can find it in. So, yeah, yeah. Cool, man. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see. So, Midnight Range is saying, ask me if he's... Yeah, I'll, I'll find out if he's if he's even tried loading any rounds on that. Just to go back to that ammo real quick. I'll make, I got some good advice to give him. So, guys, thank you for chiming in on that. Um, otherwise, I think that's pretty much that. Local 223 says 9 millimeter all pass. Yeah, but you can do 1,100 rounds per minute. I mean, that's a lot of lead to throw down range. I mean, I, if you wanted to give me one, I suppose I would take a 93R. I don't know. I'm just thinking, so... Uh, 9 millimeter is perfectly fine for a range toy. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, I mean, like, three-round burst mode or full auto could do some collateral damage if necessary, so... Makes for a good movie gun. Makes for a great movie gun. 9 millimeter was designed for people who knew how to shoot a gun. Just save your money and buy the AR that shoots 150 rounds a second. Yes, get that ghost gun. Go print it. Go buy the plans and print it off at home in your 3D printer. And get that clip, get that 60 round clip for it that fires all 60 rounds in one second. Oh, the and, 60 round clip is in? Yep, clip is in. The 60 round clip is in that's got the chainsaw attachment on the front, and uh, you're good. Yeah. Nine millimeter was designed for people who know how to shoot. Didn't the Crouch design it? Didn't we whip their ass twice? Ooh, ooh, man. Shots fired. All right. Well, on that note, guys, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. So let's go ahead and let uh, everybody just uh, just just plug their channels and say goodbye. And then I think we'll go ahead and go. So, uh, Tony, we'll start with you as usual. So, Tony, any any final parting words for us today before we go? Uh, have a good day, everybody. All right. Cool, man. Thanks for joining us. All right. You stay warm, Tony. Gun snob. Anything you want to say before we go, bud? Um, yeah, I got a giveaway going. Just started it yesterday because I'm right at a thousand subs. So I'm going to put the link out there to that video. You don't have to do anything, but just comment if you're interested in making your own holsters. I've got some stuff for that. So cool. Yeah. You got some good videos posted on that on your channel, right? I've been seeing some Kydex stuff coming up lately. Good deal. Cool, man. All right. So guys, make sure you subscribe to the gun shot, the gun snob and get over there and check out his channel on YouTube. I only need 12 more. Hey, hey, let's make it happen. Come on, let's get over there right now and go sub. Let's get it taken care of. Let's do this. Let's do this. Uh, Snob, if you want to put your um, your channel name over on the internal chat or over in the chats, do so. Get it over there and we'll see if we can get those 12 for you by this afternoon and make it happen. So, cool. All right. And uh, Squib, anything you want to say before we go? Uh, 45 ACP for life. <laughs> 45 AARP for life. Is that what you said? <laughs> now, look, not that I want to step in front of one. Okay. I don't think anybody here would want to. I mean, and I'm slow, but even I could not run one of those. So <laughs> that's all right. It's all right. Hey, it, it, it worked. It was the round that conquered, you know, Europe. So, you know, <laughs> all right, man. Cool. Cool. All right. Uh, Kingpin, any, anything you want to say before we go? Yeah. Make sure you uh, like, share, and subscribe to Travis P11. Thanks, man. And- uh, go over and check out Rick's Life as I See It today at 3 p.m. Eastern. And uh, he's got a 200 sub giveaway. He's pretty close. He's within, I think, three subs the last time I checked. So uh, see if we can't get him to his mark. There's a lot of great giveaways going on right now. If you just follow the Gun Channel's family closely, there's a lot of great stuff that people are giving away and doing and, you know, opportunities to win ammo and all kinds of prizes and good stuff. So, yeah, do check that out. Rick's Life as I See It's a great podcast. It's a lot of fun to listen to. Definitely do check it out. And also make sure you guys subscribe to uh, David Bowling's channel. Uh, are you just calling the channel Kingpin or is it, what? what is the channel, what is the name of the channel just so I have it correct now? Because I'm subscribed to you. I just watch your videos, but it's Kingpin, right? Yeah, it's Kingpin, yeah. Okay, okay. make sure you check it out. And if you find stuff on bowling, you probably have the wrong channel. Is that mm-hmm. like yeah, actual I'm probably bowling? probably the okay. worst bowler that there is. <laughs> See, I figured maybe, I know it's a last name thing or something, but I thought maybe, you know, it was just because you were an awesome bowler, you know, like you, you got the, you got the, you guys got the matching shirts on the team, you know, and David, as far as I can tell, everybody in my family is a horrendous bowler. <laughs> David, <laughs> you need to go to a bowling alley. David, when we meet up, Let's the truth go comes bowling. out. The truth Let's comes go out. bowling. You're going to roll it between your legs down the... <laughs> we can definitely do that. Hey, my you. wife is in the background laughing because she knows I suck at bowling, too. For both you guys, we will get out the bumpers. We'll put the bumpers down for you guys so you both get a chance to win, okay? I'm there. I'm <laughs> there. The bumpers down the lane, you know. Make sure you don't drop it this time, guys. God, seriously. Hey, so. you know what, though? If me and David had a bowling match, lowest score wins. Okay? <laughs> that, would be, that would be awesome. That's what you guys should do, so... 
Yep. Hey, yep. David, <laughs> you need to go shoot you a channel trailer and do it at the bowling alley. Just That'd bowling be and awesome, make a channel man. trailer. <laughs> Hit the I'll mark with, with the kingpin, and the ball just goes off to the side yeah. and misses all the pins. <laughs> I'll see how they feel about me taking a bunch of guns in the bowling alley and doing it there. <laughs> oh, man. Today we're going to work on your bowling accuracy. Yeah, there you go. Oh, man, cool. cool. Hey, but anyway, kingpin, thanks for being here, man. I appreciate having you here, and uh, you have yourself a good day. And, guys, make sure you check out kingpin's channel. So, good stuff. And last but not least, we got Calvers 32 special. What's going on, baby? How we doing, man? Not you're 38 much. special. You're 32 special. You were talking about 25. No, 32s. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 32 Winchester special rifle round. There we that's go. It. That's it. That's, that's it. That's where yes. the name comes from. All right. So, uh, hey, yeah. Tell us about the channel. The link. Uh, my channel you know, uh, sub number has fluctuated a bit as of late. That's because I was trying to get to 150. It shot to 200 and dropped back to 130 again. I don't know if it was. Oh. Well, you know, something, um, yeah, that's true, but it doesn't show the lost number of subs in the you know, uh, analytics. I'm wondering if they were bot channels and you know, a uh, YouTube just deleted them, so it didn't really count yeah. against me. I'm trying to figure that one out. Check, I don't know. Check different places, I get different view counts whether I'm on my phone versus my computer versus like checking on somebody else's tablet. I have three different view counts for my videos going at any given time. Yeah, yeah that's true. Beta is always every different I would than dashboard too. Check the next day because it seems like every 24 hours it, it updates and it's never accurate. Like it'll show so many yeah. views on this and then I'll go look it up on like my wife's phone to see what it says for views and it's got 50 or 100 views more. It's like, what? And I just open the app. So it's really slow to update. So it's yeah, hard telling. Yeah. I'm still trying to get to that 150 YouTube sub, 50 gun streamer sub. And that's for, uh, I have the video out there announcing that I'm going to give away a couple of the gear website playing card decks when I hit those numbers. Uh, I appreciate the invite being brought onto the show. As yeah. for, uh, you know, jokingly with, the, you know, I'll bowl against Dave and Squibb. That's where, because uh, my uh, U.S. Bowling Congress, you know, uh, you know, approved average is only about 135, you know, with a high score of 201. So, you know, I shouldn't give, you know, a, you know that was a couple of years ago. I shouldn't uh, give you guys too much of a run for your money, right? But uh, So we've all come to the conclusion that we shoot better than we bowl then. Is that is that what we're pretty much down to now? Is that, I think yeah, so. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, we can shoot uh, way better than we bowl. Don't don't count on us to just defend you in a bowling situation. So Yeah, I was going to say, you know, I think a uh, 9 millimeter, 45, uh, 40 cal, 44, whatever – is going to protect you a heck of a lot better than a bowling ball ever will. So, are you, yeah. saying, are you saying don't bring a bowling ball to a gunfight? Exactly. <laughs> In the words of Peter Cetera, I am a man who will fight for your honor as long as it's not the bowling alley. So, <laughs> oh man, a little Karate Kid 2 soundtrack. All right, that was pointless. Okay, guys, so thanks for joining us today. Caliber Corner episode number 83. We had all kinds of great discussions, a lot of gun talk, love talking about guns. Uh, on my channel, I got more content coming your way. Still can't get out to the range because it's terrible outside, snowing like crazy. I think the sun might be coming out now, but we just got done getting about three or four inches of snow. But um, otherwise, I think that's it. Join us next Saturday. Just a quick heads up. We do have to take our vehicle in for repair, and it has to happen on a Saturday, so there's a possibility that there won't be a caliber corner at some point in the future. I'll try to give you guys a heads up and notice about that. we got a vehicle recall, and we've got to take it to the dealership. So, um, Unfortunately, it has to happen on a Saturday because of our jobs. We don't have a choice. What's that? They don't have Wi-Fi at the dealership, and you'll fire up the caliber corner from the I, living room? I, I could, I suppose. I mean, I, I would. Maybe we'll do that, and I'll sit there and eat cookies in the dealership the whole time and let you guys run it. So, um, <laughs> But anywho, so all right, guys. Y'all take care, everybody. I want you guys to have a great uh, weekend. You guys stay warm if you're in the cold climate. Stay dry if it's raining wherever you are. Don't forget, today is the second. Every second does matter. Does matter. Get out there. Uh, take your firearms out to the range. Do what you want to do to get the importance of the Second Amendment out there. Be vigilant about what's going on, local laws, everything going on and things being passed. Make sure you guys are contacting representatives and uh, not voting for them if they're not taking care of our needs, right? So keep an eye on all those people. And otherwise, over on uh, the, the YouTube side, I'll try to get through this quick. We got... Uh, Jorge Cortez, Cowboy Swami, Patrick, Tim Allen, Tony Nagy, Suey778, Rich White, Patrick Tacos and French Fries, Guitar Man, Pete, Tahuya P229, uh, Scott P79's out there, Agorizer's with us, and uh, everybody on this panel's out there too, Moo Moo Butt's out there too, Moo Butt Butt's out there, uh, Boob Sweat joined us today, Snob's wife was out there, SS Pond, Midnight Range, Local 223, Frank Hellman, and anybody else that I missed, I do apologize. Uh, you guys have yourselves a great weekend, and we should see you next Saturday. So this has been Caliber Corner, episode number 83. Thanks for joining us.